always watching out for you. This is a First Alert 5 weather alert. Hello everyone, this is meteorologist Sam Schreier. This storm has turned destructive and life-threatening. Now let's explain exactly what is going on. We have registered a 97 mile per hour gust that is over at the Colorado Springs Airport. Highly likely that we're seeing some pretty strong gusts down around the Cheyenne Mountain area, but I need everyone along and east of I-25 to simply shelter away from this storm. Winds are now in the destructive category. When we reach 90 or more miles per hour, we worry about debris from buildings, signs, roads, anything like that. Not only damaging you walking outside your car, you need to be sheltered away from the storm. It is an extremely dangerous situation we have passed above wind speeds that are typically reserved towards the lower levels of a low level tornado this is an incredible strong storm again 97 miles per hour coming out of the north the monument sensor has been acting up all day it is likely blowing 60 to 70 miles per hour over monument hill if you live east of I-25, basically cut the city in half, go east. I need you to, again, be sheltering away from this storm. With the 70, uh, 97 mile per hour wind gusts around the airport, it's highly likely that several spots around are seeing very close, if not 100 miles per hour. We've got an 80 degree or 80 mile per hour wind in Fountain, 83 in Falcon, which means the winds are now to the point where you will not be able to see barely inches in front of your face if you're out with all of the snow that is falling. Now kind of backing up, rain and snow to the south, heavy rain from Pueblo to Canyon City. But what we are most concerned about is the snow driving and forcing its way on through, especially through Colorado Springs, up to Monument Hill, up towards Spruce, basically as you go north to Denver. Woodman Road is closed from Colorado Springs up past Denver to Lone Tree, Highway 24. Extremely dangerous getting into Woodland Park. Highway 24 is closed east. Highway 94 is closed east. And the interstate and now all central roads through Colorado Springs have passed into what we considered dangerous and extreme to drive on. Even though the snow has been lower downtown, there's been rain for longer, the winds are driving 70, 80 to 90 miles per hour with their peak gusts. It has passed well into a dangerous situation. And then the wider view across the region, it is not just the springs. Woodland Park, Teller County, we are getting snowfall that is with way less wind but still plenty of gusts off and on. Our reporter, Allison Zimmerman, is out in Woodland Park. Follow her on Twitter. She'll be able to post more updates from Woodland Park. But we had a report, Jessica Van Meter passed that along to me earlier, of 11 inches of snow just about a mile west of Woodland Park. And this system is far from being done. So snow totals are not only going to meet expectations in Woodland Park, they are going to exceed them by a lot. If we're already at a foot, and we have the whole rest of the afternoon to go. We should plan on at least another six inches, but likely more with heavy snow over the Monument Hill area up to Castle Rock. Just kind of backtracking one more time. You've got incredible snow trying to move all the way down to the El Paso Pueblo County line. You've got snow leading into parts of El Paso County, but a rain from Pueblo South. So much rain, in fact, that there could be some instances of flooding going unreported. Other meteorologists that I work with, Jeff Matthews, is passing me information. Black Forest has had nine inches of snow. Power is out at Hogden and Highway 83. So obviously an incredibly dangerous situation. Blowing snow all the way north to Denver. We will continue to track this as we go. Now my producer Tom is in my ear. Tom, before I go, is there anything else I need to let people know of or anything else you've seen or heard? Okay, so the Oh my goodness. So look at the snow drifts on the side of I-25 up by Toma Road on the concrete barriers. The interstate is still closed. So if there's any cars on the road, you are not supposed to be there. And again, we've got huge drifts piling up to the concrete barrier, basically in that lane right in the center of the road. Now my other meteorologist, Jessica Van Meter. Jessica, was there anything you wanted to add? 
the wind gust at the uh, Colorado Springs Airport, 97 miles per hour. Talked with them on chat. They called the tower to confirm that gust. Said no damage that they knew of yet, which is good news. That could still change, but so far no reported damage with that. If we can take weather three, there we go. We're going to do a quick check of some of those roads around the area right now. We saw that sky cam. Here's another one, I-25 and Interquest. You can see those trees blowing around, very diminished visibility. You can just barely make out the barriers there just to give you an idea of those white out conditions with that very wet, heavy snow and the gusty winds out there. One of the reasons I-25 is closed. As Sam said, you are not supposed to be on I-25 right now. We have closed all the way from Woodman Road in Colorado Springs all the way up into the Denver metro area. So through Larkspur, Castle Rock, all of those areas that is closed no idea when that is going to reopen just yet and several other road closures as well especially as you get out east we've got highway 24 falcon eastbound all the way to lyman is closed 94 from uh, east, east of colorado springs all the way out towards the county border closed as well so you're going to encounter plenty of those issues another reason no one should be out driving in this storm you can't even get where you want to go anyway thank you very much jessica we have now got our signal back and we are on air so whenever possible let's try to switch back over to weather one this computer everyone joining us we have now passed in what's considered an extremely dangerous situation and i'm going to skip to it we have had a reported 97 mile per hour wind gusts at the colorado springs airport jessica called the tower manager at the airport there was no damage from this however wind speeds at or exceeding 90 miles per hour will qualify for what i consider extremely dangerous win if you are up and down I-25, you need to be sheltered in place, especially east of I-25. Now, my producer Tom has been with me in my ear, giving me information. One of the things he mentioned is that there are 500 stranded drivers throughout El Paso County. Tom, what was the other thing you mentioned in my ear? Multiple rescues happening. If we can, we did have a live look. That's right. At one of them. We lost the live look, that's okay. Let's go ahead and pull up some traffic cams around just to help spell the picture here because the winds are part of the story. We had really bad conditions. This is at Interquest, everyone. You can barely see the road. We should not be having cars driving on I-25. It is an absolute mess out there. You can barely see past the trees. Now, what we're gonna do is if we can, take more traffic looks, but let's come back into the radar as we go. Maybe the next way we can do is try to get up north to Denver. That was at Interquest on the north side of the city. Can't say it enough, and Jessica helped spell it out. Multiple road closures. The most impressive one, the most unfortunate one, is I-25 from Woodman Road up to Lone Tree. That is past Denver going north. That is about a 47-mile stretch of road. East, Highway 94, closed. I would consider anything east of I-25 now to be in extreme danger. And we say that with the 90 to 100 mile per hour gusts that were featured on this side of the city. Anything over 90 miles per hour, you worry about debris hitting you, hitting your car, damaging. It is life-threatening. That is within the levels of some lower category tornado wind speeds. It's extremely damaging. We've had a report of 11 inches in Woodland Park, and that was a little while ago. That's likely got up. Jeff Matthews said in Black Forest we had a report of nine inches. More reports keep coming in. And the thing is, it goes all the way from southern El Paso County line up north to Denver. Incredible, incredible snow out of here. La Vida Pass remains closed. A bad situation. We've had rain nonstop. Basically, I'm going to skip past Briargate here from Pueblo to Pueblo West to Canyon City and down south so much, though, that I am still moderately worried about the possibility of flooding in and around Pueblo. It's been that much rain basically since early this morning. We are going to continue to see heavy rain down there with snow trying to move in. Now, again, the biggest story that we decided to cut in for and help everyone out with is by far and away the wind speeds outside, especially along and east of I-25. Now, the wind sensor over Monument says a 28 mile per hour gust. That is extremely likely to be closer to 60 miles per hour, if not more. That sensor has been acting up. And who we've got with us is actually Rob Quirk. We'll probably try to bring him in here. Rob, are you ready to kind of help? Uh, of course, I'm always here. Yeah, you're here. I meant if you're mic'd up. Yeah, you know, I just drove across from approximately Rangewood and Austin Bluffs. Uh, Rangewood, Austin 
plus, and it's just a mess. I, oh. I think Rob's mic is off. Rob's mic is off. He's getting it on, but basically. Is Rob good to talk? Yeah. So anyway, I just drove in about a half an hour ago from uh, Rangewood and Austin Bluffs, generally over to the Rock Rim area. It is absolutely a mess. We need to tell everybody that uh, eastbound Woodman is closed essentially from I-25 all the way to Union, possibly to Rangewood and beyond. I know that there, I saw a jackknife semi right off of I-25 on Woodman. Also, that uh, incline that goes up Woodman to Union, that is an issue. It's a uh, total uh, gridlock situation there. Uh, again, I can't say it enough. I was just shocked, frankly, about how many people are still driving around in this, n despite all the warnings from law enforcement across the region. It's, you cannot see a quarter of a mile in front of you. You cannot see what uh, traffic lights are uh, green or red or yellow until you're right on top of them. Too many people in four-wheel drive vehicles going way too fast. As you mentioned, uh, Sam, El Paso yeah. County reporting somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 plus people stranded right now. There's a reason for that. Too many people who do not need to be on the road are out there. So we can't emphasize enough. And as you mentioned, the airport is shut down. No flights in or out. We were told the next flight will not be until tomorrow morning, somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1 a.m. That's actually a positive sign, but thousands of flights are canceled or delayed out of DIA. It's just uh, a massive situation. Rob, I did want to ask you, do you have any information on power outages across the city? The, the latest we had were still the one in Cimarron Hills. We had a report of a power outage up in the Woodland Park area. Okay. We have not been able, excuse me, up in Monument. We have not been able to confirm that yet, but we have had call, folks call in saying that there is a power outage up in parts of the monument area again we're trying to get through but some of these uh, internet connections etc facebook has been down for yeah. a while and the ability to try and tap into other websites that may be impacted by the weather so we aren't getting critical up-to-date information from some communities also we just got an alert from the fountain police department that link road uh... that uh, connects into Old Pueblo Road. There's a section of that is shut down. A power line was knocked over, so there's traffic issues there. But again, just can't emphasize enough, folks. If you actually don't have to be out on the road, don't, because uh, Woodman was a mess. I understand that Dublin has been shut down, yeah. because obviously that's the alternative now to try and go off I-25 yep. to go east, so that's an issue as well. Look at, look at InterQuest even within the last couple of minutes. I mean, we were having, I was just having trouble seeing that tree right up next to the camera. So uh, we've been reporting from Shayla up in Monument Hill when she was there earlier to Bill out in Falcon, like a tenth of a mile visibility. Rob, it's incredible. Earlier this morning, DIA had uh, 1.1300 cancellations, and obviously that is going to be huge. And then, of course, what only makes it worse is the announcement from President Trump. Right. I was just going to say, though, uh, the the track that I take to work every day is pretty yes. much the same. So I know where the, the stoplights are coming in. So I know where to kind of slow down because you basically had to get right on top of the street lights to find out whether it was red or green. But people who are maybe new to the community aren't familiar with where they're headed. That's causing problems too. So I knew where to stop. But literally, you didn't know what color the light was until you got right into that intersection. And again, too many people going too fast. And then the police officers have to intervene. Yep. They're overloaded with uh, response calls. So again, people, you need to stay indoors. This is a very, very serious situation. I mean, when you're talking about 96 mile an hour wind gusts yeah. out at the airport, I mean, I lived through the blizzard of 97. Also, that blizzard we had three years ago in March. I was driving to DIA, coincidentally, that uh, year. That was a mess, too. They shut down the airport. Yeah, look at the flags on our yeah. live feed. People really need to pay attention to what you're saying, what law enforcement's saying, the information we are posting on social media, because it absolutely matters. And this is about saving lives, and people may nonchalantly deal with this kind of uh, situation on their own, but it is a life and death situation. We've seen Bill Folsom out east, just a mess. We've seen reports up to, uh, oh, we're going to go to Bill Folsom right now again. Bill doing yeoman work out there in eastern El Paso County. Let's check back in with Bill is out in Falcon. Bill, any change? No, and in fact, it is getting worse out here. I'm in here where I've got a little alcove and protection, but we're going to step out for you just to show you what's going on. It's blowing so hard, it takes... Okay, apparently they're not hearing me. Yeah, are you hearing me now? 
Hello, hello. Okay, sorry, somebody was talking to me and I'm getting the wind and wasn't hearing what they're saying, but I'm gonna step out here just to show you what's going on. As soon as you step out into the wind here, it is just having to brace yourself with these 80, 60 to 80 mile gusts that are coming out here. All you can see maybe is 20 yards out here. I've got my back to it, so I apologize if you're not seeing me, but that's what you've got to do to get in and out. We've had a couple people who've been coming in who are stranded here. They've gone outside for a smoke. They take a couple puffs and they're back in. It is just too hard to stay out here more than a few minutes. This is happening all over the place. We've been talking to a few people who are stranded and they're living within just a couple of miles here. They tried to go back roads to get to their home. They're saying you just can't see to go, so they're just gonna hang out a couple miles from home. I'm gonna come in closer, you can see how it knocks the breath out of you to go out there into this wind. Across here, it's not even a football field, there's a Wendy's out there, there's also a gas station out there, you can't see it. The snow, it is going across, it is piling up. I have no idea how much snow has come down, but we're seeing it pile up by inches because of the drifting out here. It was tricky for us to even come out started to lose visibility at 10 this morning we know we're here for the long haul now because you're just not going anywhere out here right now so crazy wind yeah this fits into the category big time into a blizzard we're going to be out here today showing you what's going on a lot of people stranded a couple stores have stayed open they're not getting a lot of business but they're doing it as a public service giving people a place to stay and wait out this storm that is the best thing to do right now stay where you are hunker down we'll keep an eye on it for you keep you posted we're going to toss it back to you all right, Bill, uh, take care of yourself. Be safe, you and the photographer that's with him. Boy, just incredible conditions out in the eastern plains. And that's wide open country. That's how bad it is there. But you even come into the city and just, again, driving into work, uh, it's just amazing from block to block how limited the visibility is. So please, you need to be extra careful. Let's take a live look now. There's I-25. That's north of Colorado Springs into the Larkspur area. And again, that entire stretch from basically Woodman all the way to Denver is shut down in both directions because, frankly, you cannot see. And you all know if you've driven back and forth between the two communities on a good day, you know how wide open that is. And with... Uh, wind gusts in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 miles an hour the whiteout conditions are just amazing and again alternative routes like uh, 83 <coughs> excuse me taking 105 over to 83 north and southbound the state patrol is saying don't even try that that's even worse out there so there's not a lot of options so again we can't emphasize enough just stay indoors a lot of businesses now are finally letting people out that may be a factor in why there are more people out on the roads right now that maybe some Businesses thought, hey, we're going to keep this going for a while, but then finally they realized this is a matter of public safety and trying to get people home. But again, it is just a bad situation out there if you have to drive a block or you have to drive a couple of miles. Or, you know, our hearts go out to those first responders that are uh, continuing to have to work in this situation. Call after call, accident alert status all over the place. But uh, again, there you see that live look. Also, say that again, I'm sorry. Okay, and there again is basically a whiteout condition. That's in Colorado Springs at Woodman, and we were talking about it. And again, eastbound Woodman all the way up to Union, to Rangewood, Austin Bluffs, all the way out that way is uh, basically shut down. For those of you who know, that's uh, traffic coming at us westbound. Eastbound's a mess because you get in that incline that goes up to Union, and it's absolutely terrible. And then folks are trying to take an alternate route on Dublin, which has its uh, share of ups and downs. And we're hearing a lot of traffic issues on that street as well. So again, not a lot of safe options. Okay, and uh, we want to get a check on conditions up in Monument. Shayla Gerard doing yeoman work all day. Let's check in with Shayla right now. Rob, right now we are stranded up in Monument because these road conditions behind me are so bad. Now, thankfully, I have the news truck right beside me. It's blocking a little bit of that wind. But what you can't see past this road right here is actually a view of I-25 with not a single car on the road. And that has been the story for most of the, the afternoon and most of the morning, actually. A very rare sight. And these wind conditions are what's making things not even that much snow out here, but it's that wind that is making that piercing snow rain so dangerous out here for drivers. In fact, when we were coming over here, I'd say you could probably see two to three feet in front of you. Now, as you can tell behind me, a little more visibility right now. There are a couple of cars out on the roads, but really that is that is not the norm. You guys should not be out there. Uh, visibility extremely limited. You could probably see 
past the hood of your car at most in some points. What you're even noticing from this wind coming right now is it is uh, unrelenting, not going anywhere, anywhere fast. So as we've been hearing over the course of the day, over 500 drivers stranded out there. They are saying it could take anywhere from hours to even up to a day to rescue some of these folks. So stay indoors. I-25 still closed from Woodman all the way up to Denver. Um, it's time for me to step inside for a moment. But as we've been saying, not the time to be out the roads. For now, watching out for you, in Colorado, Shayla Gerard in News 5. Shayla, yeah, stay safe. Get inside because only a few minutes out of this stuff and it's uh, frostbite time. All right, we want to go uh, to the west. We want to check in in Woodland Park where Sam and our other meteorologists were telling us that uh, they've gotten around 11 inches of snow up there. Let's check back in with Allison Zimmerman for conditions at this hour. Allison. A good afternoon, Rob. And the last time uh, we checked in with you guys was around noon. And I can tell you it has gotten significantly worse up here. Visibility just way worse than it was about an hour and a half ago. Last time we checked in with you all. Uh, let's go ahead and get a live look out here right now. It seems like people are starting to listen. They're staying home. They're not driving out here. But we've seen quite a few cars. It looks like there's a few coming this direction as well right now. I mean, but a couple hours ago, you really wouldn't have even known that there was a blizzard because we were just seeing so many cars out here on the roads. But Teller County Sheriff advising everyone to just stay inside right now. Visibility, they're reporting, is less than 100 feet in most places. As you can kind of tell, we can't see very far from where we're at right now. We're off of Highway 24. As we were coming in this morning, those roads were slick. They were messy. That seems to still be the case. And they're really working to try and get these plows out here, but they're doing the best that they can, especially with the area that they have to cover. There's only so many plows making it throughout Highway 24 today uh, to really clean off these roads. But it does look like the drivers that are coming out here are taking it slow, but avoid coming out here at all costs. The visibility is just getting way worse, and that wind is starting to pick up. Now, I hate to complain because it's certainly not as worse as what my colleagues are dealing with in eastern El Paso County. But it is not fun. This is not something you want to be driving in whatsoever just because of the speed. And you can see right now we're getting some of that blowing and drifting snow into this live shot right now. So don't come out here if you can avoid it. As you can see, there's more cars uh, coming west here on Highway 24. Again, it is just a mess. They're advising people stay inside. Uh, we did catch up with a business owner earlier today who is keeping her doors open. She says that's something she feels is a public service right now. And she wants to be open in case people need her help. But she might consider closing her doors in the next couple of hours or so just because of how fast things have picked up in the last hour. You pass as far as we know right now still open, but we'll keep an eye on any road closures that happen up here. But like I said, it has just gotten a lot messier in the last hour or so. You can just see all the snow hitting my face here. It's a complete mess. Just don't do it. That's the best advice we can give. So go ahead and send things back to you all in the studio right now. All right, Allison, stay safe. And uh, we got some information we want to update. Uh, all runways, as you might expect, the DIA now completely closed down. I was talking about Highway 83 as an alternative to I-25. Forget about it. 83 is closed from 105, that's the main thoroughfare through Monument, all the way to Franktown, so 83 is shut down now. Also, we got an update from uh, utilities that approximately 15,000 plus homes and businesses, basically Air Force Academy, Glen Eagle in the Monument area, power is out right now. So again, just want to update you on those uh, circumstances. In the meantime, let's check back in with uh, Sam Schreier. Thank you. Uh, the other thing, Rob, and I might have missed it, Pena Boulevard 2 DIA shut down. Can't get to the airport, and that's going to be a problem for a while. Now, what we really cut in for, of course, was the snow, was this, a 97-mile-per-hour wind gust reported at the Colorado Springs Airport. To get this kind of a wind gust, you have to have sustained winds into the 70 mile per hour range. Now, easily throughout this area, there's got to be some wind gusts that are right around 100 miles per hour. It is going to be come and stay an extremely dangerous storm in the winds are one of the biggest problems out of this thing. So if you live along and east of I-25, what I want you to do is just 
shelter. I don't want you out. It is now to the point where it is life threatening and extremely dangerous because with that level of wind, you are looking at damage from debris blowing out of the north across in the east west, east west roads. It is an extremely bad situation. Visibility is at nothing. And a friend of mine was driving around town trying to get home and he said multiple intersections are without power and need to be treated as four way stops. Now what we're going to do is go back and take a look at some of the radar views starting wide coming on in. This system is not stopped yet. This has had about the exact same look since around seven to eight o'clock in the morning and it started turning bad at nine with tremendously heavy snow from Denver to El Paso County to Teller County, perhaps a little bit of a break starting to show up over Southern Teller County to Fremont County, rain to the south. But let's push in here where it is the biggest impact with this snow is central northern Teller County. We had Allison there getting absolutely hammered by that snow and the winds are still gusty off and on in Woodland Park, Teller County. They are by far windier through El Paso County. So if you live, like I said, across the central part of the city and you're east, the interstate's a good kind of guide. You need to shelter away from this storm. It is life threatening. Uh, there's a look at Bill out in Fountain. If we can't punch back in on me at some point, that would be great. He's just kind of sheltering away from this storm. It is definitely a situation where you want to take extra care. Again, this is kind of our reporter Bill out in Fountain. If we can, when we get a second here, try to punch on back to me at the weather wall. That would be fantastic. They're having to try to hold and brace the doors open uh, from the Safeway, I believe they are, at Falcon. So just an evolving situation. And we obviously have some technical glitches and difficulties going on here uh, at our KOAA studio. So they're trying to get this thing figured out. But again, right now we're coming back to Rob. Why don't you just take it? up when you have wind gusts of 96 miles yeah. an hour and uh, blizzard conditions out there. I'll tell you what, uh, yeoman work to all the reporters in this market and the uh, law enforcement officers out there, first responders, firefighters doing a great job. Here's a live look right there. That's on top of the News 5 studios here in Rock Rim and kind of give you a, a microcosm of what's happening from uh, perspective looking to the east from our studio there. Yeah, and Sam, I did have a question. So you're saying that the circulation, that system has kind of sat there since 7, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock this morning. So where is the peak of this thing? What's the timeline in terms of when we're going to see the worst of this? It basically was going to start to peak at 10 o'clock, Rob, and it's going to keep going. 10 o'clock tonight. 10 o'clock, no, sorry, it oh. started to peak at 10 o'clock this morning. Okay. And it is going to keep going very difficult, very hard, through I would say at least 6 to 7 o'clock tonight. Uh -huh. Now past then it'll still be bad out there but i would say the peak intensity is what we've got right now through six to seven o'clock at night this system rob had the pressure of a category two hurricane over la junta it's probably going to be a record breaker and it's something i have never actually seen before um, in my time of doing weather just something so incredibly unique now that the center of this low is like what over nebraska and yeah. south dakota now started in la, yeah started in la junta southern colorado and it moved over to kansas and it's it's kind of wrapping up towards uh, Nebraska, but it's we're so, getting all that backwash yeah, from it. Yeah. It's so big, and the backwash, the backside of that low, is why it's so bad. That is the strongest part of a low pressure. It's kind of like a hurricane has the strongest part. Low pressure systems have a strongest right. part, and unfortunately, we are smack in the middle. And as bad as it is here, there was thunder snow up in Denver. Tells and, me. and is it pouring down in Pueblo and points down yes. in southeast, right? Yes, I mean, there's some so rain. Could there, are there flooding issues potentially down there? I've not seen a single report, but I have seen that much rain that if you lived on Highway 50 between Pueblo and Canyon City, south to Walsenburg, I would just be cautious about the fact that we could have some flooding. It's been that heavy of rain again, Rob, since like 8, 7 o'clock this right. morning, nonstop. Okay, and some of those areas, as we know, burn scars, yeah. uh, can't handle the water again. We've already been talking about flood meetings at some areas. Uh, communities are already talking about preparing for the worst as we move into these heavy rain mm -hmm. months and snow months, obviously, but still. Uh, and there's a look at that system. You can uh, so right above that sign where it says live yeah. radar, that's kind of where that low center is right now? Exactly, or? and I'll walk back over and show you. So Rob is asking, hey, this kind of gap in the low, is that where it's centered? It is. It started here. It's now moved over towards Kansas, a little bit of far eastern Colorado, 
which means it's trying to get out of the way. But here's the problem, everyone. It is so large in such a strong system that we still are having incredible snow wrapped all the way down from the Sangre de Cristos up, especially over Denver. Now, as the system moves away, the worst of the snow will follow it out to northeast Colorado. And we're starting to see that. It's just the level of this system has not let it stop with heavy snow over the Springs, Teller County. And I said the intensity of this storm will stay till about 6 o'clock or so. That's especially for northern El Paso County and Woodland Park. But my hope is that we can start to get this to weekend just a little bit closer. Basically, all across Colorado Springs, it's bad. We're during the day, so we're trying to get some rain mixed in on the south side, pushing it a lot closer towards Colorado Springs itself, basically downtown all the way north to Monument. You've got problems. We talked about how Woodman Road on I-25 at Woodman to along, or excuse me, past Denver is closed, Lone Pine. Then Rob talked about how Woodman Road, parts of it were close to the east, extremely dangerous out there. Rain, super heavy down in Pueblo and Pueblo West, but this remains one of the biggest problems was the wind. But Rob, before I toss back to you, we now have a 79 mile per hour wind, still incredibly dangerous out there, but at least we have shied away from the 100 mile per hour mark. So some improvement, and that is a sign that this is starting to weaken. These winds die back a little bit. That'll be another sign. Then the snow will start to kind of fade away. All right, Sam, thanks. And just a heads up to folks, in different school districts already some closures ahead of Thursday morning classes officially district 49 you are closed tomorrow and also the Woodland Park School District we heard from Allison Zimmerman a foot of snow up there Woodland Park School District closed tomorrow as well we want to check again with our Bill Folsom out in the Falcon area where obviously just in which includes the district 49 school district bill what can you tell us Well, first off, I know they were cutting in on me earlier. Just to make people aware, I have been getting some texts from friends and stuff saying, what are you doing standing out there? We're going out to give you a feel for this. But like the rest of you, we're having to get in, keep ourselves warm a little bit. We got a little alcove here where we're staying warm. But I am going to go out and show you what's going on here out in Falcon because there's just some incredible wind happening. I put my glasses on. I wear contact lenses. And last time I went out, <coughs> I got so much in there, I had to take them out to even dry out my contact lenses because it's just swirling out here. The wind is actually coming from the west and going to the east. <coughs> Excuse me, but as it's doing it, it's swirling and creating a drifts like you're seeing down here. And the further you get out, the more you have to brace yourself against it as it's coming in, turning your back to it. We've had a few people coming into the one Safeway store that is open out here. And they've been having to walk lightly when they come out. They're having to actually pull their carts through the snow out here. Visibility wise, to the entrance out here you can't see to the fast food places that are across the street and highway 24 is just down here it's closed we can't see it i can just tell you it's there a few people who live really close by have been coming in <coughs> to get some groceries but when you have these gusts out here it takes the breath away it swirls around and even with a hood coming on it fills up your face freezes really quickly so i'm giving you a sample of what it's like to go out there in just a minute, I'm going to be coming back in. But it's whiteout conditions out here. We've heard that El Paso County is not having the plows out on the road, not because they aren't heavy enough to keep moving. It's because they can't see. Talked to several people who've gone into ditches. A woman who thought somebody was coming to pick her up has been waiting three hours. She's probably here for a lot longer. A lot of people are stepping up, though, asking what they can do to help people out. A guy who lives nearby knows the road. He's gone. And he said he's not going to go too far, but if he can get people back on the road to get them home, he's been helping them out out here. He said if it gets too bad, though, he will go in. He has heavy-duty, dually, double wheels on the back where he can get out and move around. But for now, total whiteout conditions. We're going to be out here through the duration watching this for you because we don't have the choice but to go back in. We're going to stay in and stay warm. We're going to say do the same. Can I go back to you? Watching out for you in eastern El Paso County, Bill Folsom, News 5. Bill, thank you so much. Uh, there's a live look. This is near the Greenland exit uh, north of Monument in Colorado Springs and I-25 plows trying to get through. As you heard from Bill Folsom, a very important point that basically those plow drivers that are working the interstate and some of those open areas trying to plow areas when the visibility allows. A lot of those uh, county plows in El Paso County not going anywhere. Understandably, it's a safety risk. They can't see 
a quarter mile in front of them, so it does them no good to try and get out there and put their lives at risk. But just driving through Colorado Springs, I have seen plows. They are out as well. But again, the same standard applies to them as well. This is about public safety. They're going to try and do the best they can to plow these roads and streets to at least the main thoroughfares to get traffic moving. And also saw a plow trying to move some cars when I was driving uh, in from Woodman Road to try and get some vehicles out of the way to get traffic moving. So they're trying to do the best they can, but again, very limited as we are seeing just intense blizzard conditions right now. I want to check in with our Katie Blaze, who just arrived at the station here. Uh, Katie, let us know uh, what conditions you encountered as you tried to make your way into the Rock Rimmon Studios. Well, Rob, I was coming from the southeast side of Colorado Springs, taking me a good hour to get up here to our Rock Rimmon Studios, only going about 30 miles per hour on I-25 as conditions were very windy, very slick, very, very slow. And coming up to, uh, just even on that huge backup of cars along that small hill. I was sitting there for a good 20 minutes as cars just struggled to get up the hill with that snow, that rain that we had earlier this morning, making just for some very, very slick conditions. Thankfully, made it here safe and sound. But once again, if you don't have to go out in this storm today, please stay home. Of course, we will continue to keep you updated on these conditions here at our Rockerman Studios and elsewhere around El Paso County. For now, always watching out for you, Colorado Springs. Katie Blaze, News 5. Katie, thanks. And that's key that, uh, you know, we had all that, <coughs> excuse me, all that rain uh, fall earlier before the snow started to fall. And that is all uh, slush and freezing up below that level of snow. So that's really causing issues on the roadways, having to drive through that. You know, it looks like it's just puffy snow on top. But again, underneath is where it is very, very slick. So a lot of folks uh, being taken by surprise, uh, not giving themselves enough room between themselves and the car in front of them, slowing down at some of those uh, intersections as we take a live look on our rooftop here at our News 5 studios in Rock Room and about just how nasty those conditions are. But again, we're seeing those slushy uh, conditions underneath the snow that is basically uh, causing a lot of problems for folks uh, trying to drive. And you see those rear rear wheel vehicles that don't have the traction and they're getting caught in that lower layer of ice and slush and uh, they're going sideways and causing all kinds of traffic problems and that's what we're seeing even on the most uh, uh, less challenging incline on some of these streets so again just to uh, keep in mind those are what those conditions are right now so we wanted to uh, give you some updated information as we continue to take that look about <coughs> excuse me some of the uh, warming shelters that are available in the Colorado Springs and El Paso County areas right now. Woodman Valley Chapel, Woodman Valley Heights Campus, that's on Woodman Valley uh, View Drive. Peyton High School, Falcon Patriot Learning Center, Peyton uh, VFW, Calhan St. Paul's, Monument St. Peter's, New Covenant Church in Larkspur, the Douglas County Fairgrounds, that's 500 Fairgrounds Road in Douglas County because basically it's a mess. And we told you yesterday, <coughs> excuse me, one of the stories that we did that basically folks were preparing 24 hours ago, supplying some of these smaller uh, fire stations, etc., particularly in eastern El Paso County, northern El Paso County, in anticipation of exactly what we've seen today to provide shelters for those folks who get stuck, have nowhere to go. All right. And uh, we want to get a check of uh, the situation now in the monument area. Zach Thaxton joining us live. Uh, Zach, again, very difficult situation. Fill us in on conditions right now. And we lost him. There he is. It's absolutely um, impossible to travel, essentially, or breathe, for that matter, with the, uh, the strength of the wind. Right. Can you hear me? I'm not sure if uh, our, our signal uh, dumped out, but it's incredibly difficult to even breathe when you stand out here because, because of the wind and the snow in your face, but it's impossible to see. Uh, I just drove a very short distance from um, where I actually live to uh, essentially the Walgreens here in Monument and only about a mile and a half. It was virtually impossible to see past the hood of the, the vehicle that I was driving in, uh, driving through the drifts on Beacon Light Road. Uh, almost took the car out from underneath you uh, as you tr uh, went through drifts of various depth. Uh, a lot of folks 
the few folks that are out on the roads really can't see where where they're going. They can't see traffic coming up on them. They can't see traffic they're coming up upon. And uh, windshield wipers are absolutely ineffective in this because it doesn't really do anything. Everything just blows away. It's hard to tell how deep the snow actually is because in some areas it's uh, less than a quarter inch deep. In other areas, it is thigh deep, up to your thighs, maybe even up to your waist in some places. But the, uh, the wind is absolutely relentless. It's, I can't see uh, the intersection of Highway 105 and um, uh, basically the intersection, the interchange for uh, I-25 is normally just within a few, few yards here. Can't not see it at all, it, impossible to see. There's a gentleman here in this red uh, uh, SUV that uh, uh, says he came down here from Denver today. He was assigned here from work and uh, was trying to get back up, but uh, there's no way. He's stuck here. The Walgreens is closed. The Taco Bell is closed, 7-Eleven is open, but everything that you can imagine essentially is closed in Monument. It, there's no reason to go out at all. It was a white knuckle drive to get here, and there's nobody around. It's just, uh, just a few of us uh, for good reason. Do not go out. It's impossible to get around in, in the Tri-Lakes area right now. I'll send it back to you, Rob. Mac, thanks. Stay safe. And again, we understand that those people are just... You got to stay where you are. You are, and I, I do want to remind folks. Hopefully, you listened again when we were telling you for the last couple of days in the run up yeah. to this about having that emergency kit in your car. So important. We're seeing so many cars like that, and that was a major four-wheel drive vehicle right there. That's an and H2. If that, if that can't get through, you know that most other vehicles cannot. But again, full tank of gas, the booster cables, snow shovel, sand, litter, clothing, first aid. Hopefully, your cell phone's working. At least let people know that you're okay. And again, there's a live look right now outside. That's, <clears throat> excuse me, Woodland Park. And again, they've reached, what, upwards of 12 inches of snow right there. It really yeah. got blasted in kind of a short period of time. Also, a reminder, Woodland Park schools, you are closed tomorrow. So again, uh, the situation to the west of us is just as bad as that snow is just relentless. It is, Rob. And just a couple of <coughs> things Excuse to me. add on to this. No, it's okay. Basically, Woodland Park is about an hour ago we had an 11-inch report. So for sure, by right. now, it's over a foot. Uh, a couple new reports. We have multiple trees that are down, big ones too. Grant Meach within town, Colorado Springs, kind of just north of downtown. I don't want to say exactly where he's at, but he had one down in his neighborhood. Black Forest had an 80 mile per hour wind gust. I had a viewer on Twitter say, I have had trees down in Black Forest. We also had trees down at Pueblo Lake, a large one, Rob. Mm -hmm. Just the strong winds down there, 70 or more miles per hour with that now soft ground from the rain. A big deal. I did have one question yes. though about um, measuring the snowfall when you have 96 mile an hour <laughs> wind gusts. How do you at least get a gauge of where we are in terms of the snowfall? Well, you kind of you would kind of treat it the same as a normal. You're looking for generally an open space, but as Zach pointed out. It's so difficult to really it's all get the drifting good, and stuff. Exactly, that was half the battle of trying to uh, predict the storm for people is how much it's going to come. Even if two inches fell downtown, um, it's going to drift around and look like a lot more. Zach is probably going to be standing next to drifts that are um, uh, halfway up his body, under right. his feet tall. So it's a bad situation. Still waiting for some weakening. I mean, maybe a little bit of parts over kind of the south. And what's the key to, to let people know that it is weakening? What what, what are you looking at? that tells you, wait a minute, we may be on the backside of this, at least a little bit. Maybe, for me, a bit more of a westerly wind direction. Uh, the snow will obviously start backing up, but I think the winds will stay stronger longer than the snow will be heavy falling. But here's the problem, Rob. Even when the snow like kind of really stops, it's going to drift around because the winds are going to stay so strong for a while tonight. So hopefully we're actually getting towards the beginning of the end of this storm, but I think it's going to stay pretty nasty. Does, at least for does a the barometric hours. pressure in that load, does that uh, tell us That'll anything start to about go up. how... Oh, okay. So, so as the, low the lower pressure it goes, leads, the stronger the storm. Exactly. As, uh, as, as the pressure goes up, the storm's starting to pull away. So start prepping for nightfall without power. This is Jeff Matthews got some good points here. Basically, there's a lot of places, Rob, that are struggling to get power. It's going to get cold tonight. It's going to be the wind howling through your windows. You need to have extra wind or extra blankets. You need to have candles. No, I was food. talking about that with my wife you before were. we left. We were before I left the house. She was concerned that you know, what if power goes out? What do you do? Well, get the blankets, 
Uh, it's cold enough out, at least you can put the stuff from the refrigerator out into a snowbank. Just a little humor there, a little levity in an otherwise uh, serious situation today. But seriously, I know. people need to think about those things right now because these are going to be hit and miss power outages as we've seen. And when we're seeing you know, those kind of wind gusts knocking trees down, you don't, where, you don't know where the next power outage is going to be. That wind gust, the 97 one at the uh, airports, is they're looking at it to possibly be the strongest wind gust ever reported off the Colorado Springs wind sensor. Cheyenne Mountain has had that before, mm -hmm. but to make it all the way over to the airport is something I've never seen. I, you've been here longer than I have. Have you seen a wind gust at the airport around? You know, I've been think? through so many uh, weather scenarios, I can't remember. It's just a blur. You know, it is. It's, uh, but I do remember, I mean, this is similar, you yeah. know, I hate to go back, but the blizzard of 97 went on for a couple of days, it seemed like, in the snow and the wind. It was yeah. nasty. But there's that uh, list we wanted to get to you about some of those things you need in your vehicle. But again, we hope that you're staying home. We don't want to encourage anybody to get out there, but hopefully you've taken some of these steps because we've been talking about this for the last couple of days. A snow shovel, the kitty litter acts as a, uh, a solution to be able to help move your tires, give you a little more traction. Blanket, sleeping bag, first aid kit, bottled water, cell phone, and always key the charger, yes. possibly a portable radio if you can. I know that's old school, it's but fine. hey, when you need to know the latest weather information from the emergency services people, National Weather Service, that's what works. I did not have snow chains before I went to Crested Butte a week ago. I own them. They're an amazing idea, even if you live around Colorado Springs. And that's a uh, live look in Denver right now. And again, no one is spared from this. And as we uh, told you, it looks like uh, that car went into a tree or a, yeah. a bush. You see the caution tape there. Uh, but obviously, this is a scenario we're seeing all across uh, eastern Colorado, frankly, into the mountains. No one is spared from the. What's the, uh, the circumference of this storm system? I mean, is it somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1,000 miles in diameter or something? It seems I, humongous. I, I haven't measured it. It's, it's got to be bigger than a couple states on the East Coast. Right. So, I mean, the center of it is, if we want to pull up our Weather our weather One computer, we can look. The center of it is on the eastern border of Colorado, basically kind of over by 285. I think the road is 385 that gets into Kansas. Right. And the west side is Rob all the way back towards Salida. And the east side circulation of that storm would probably be somewhere over by Omaha. So it's a massive yeah, storm. Yeah, I would say that's probably a, a thousand miles. Well, not quite a thousand, but uh, Kansas is, I think it's 600 some miles. Okay, wide. so 1,200 miles. Off. Maybe. Yeah, it's There's huge. Two, there is severe weather associated with this to the east. There was talk of tornado warnings, tornado watches with this storm to our neighbors to the east. So it's and not you've been talking us. about this for uh, several days. So basically, has it been gathering moisture as it moved from Arizona and up through the Four Corners, etc.? Where did it get all this moisture and strength from? It started to pull it out of the Pacific Ocean. I'm told if we could pop our Weather 3 camera up, some more information there. Jessica drew this out for us, Rob. That's the extent of the circulation. You were really close. Wow. 862 miles, essentially, uh, wide. That is something um, I haven't seen. And then that kind of deeper halfway circulation point, yeah, it's about 430 miles across, which is incredible. That's snow all the way up to the Dakotas. It's pulling moisture out of the south, out of like the Gulf of Mexico, some of those southern states, and it's just basically sweeping it right into Colorado. And we got mountains. That's what makes it uh, Our producer, Monica, just told me she had, th that's Walsenburg, everybody. Can you uh, believe that? No, nope, that's a lie. That's a broken camera. Uh, it's been raining, Rob, in Walsenburg. That's, Please don't say that ever. I'm sorry. Don't ever say that. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, it's it's hard to believe. That's per, that's what you call perspective in the news business, everybody. Uh, that is an amazing look at dry roads. We can only hope that sometime in the next eight hours that we will have circumstances like that. There's another live look. Some of the clouds. Where's this one from? Oh, this is a Pueblo, Pueblo cam right now, and they've been getting rain on and off all day. Hasn't been cold enough to get the snow flurries going down but there. But they had trees out with 70 more mile per hour winds and actually Truckton, which is uh, like 94 east, around right. 94 east in El Paso, 85 mile per hour gusts. And we actually, we had a viewer email and said he thought he saw a funnel cloud. Now we're waiting to see like where it was, more specifically, uh, it was just something on the camera oh. earlier. But thunder snow we've seen. It was in Denver, which tells you how big a storm it is. You have to have a tremendous storm to get thunderstorm. And we were talking about some silly stuff going on. Sam Kramer was en route to the incline uh -huh. to possibly uh, be there to rescue somebody stranded on the incline. 
Really? That was the news. So Sam will have more on that if it was a big deal, what he ends up finding. But they were uh, potentially going to try to save somebody off the incline. Funny you should mention, I just wanted to repeat that uh, we got a message from El Paso County Sheriff's Office this morning around 10, 1030, that basically if it is not a life and death situation, they are going to put you on the back burner because priority calls are the number one priority for local police, fire, El Paso County Sheriff. So a circumstance where someone's life is in danger, that's what they're going to try and get to first and foremost. So please, they're encouraging people, unless it is a life and death situation, do not call 911. Accident alert status everywhere across the region, right there. That is a, uh, a, a perfect example of what we're talking about. The accident alert status, CSPD, Fountain PD, frankly, every community up and down I-25 from Denver to Fountain Security Widefield, major issues. Don't call for minor accidents again. Uh, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, again, prioritizing calls, only responding to those high priorities. And again, uh, we just received some information. A paramedic and a volunteer firefighter are with a patient on the incline that Sam was talking about regarding our other Sam Kramer. They're stabilizing that patient right now. Uh, not sure why someone would choose to try and... Uh, no word how they're going to get him down. Why would you try to uh, attempt the incline? There's a live look again. Now that's on uh, the green, near the Greenland exit again. That's uh, halfway between uh, Colorado Springs and Denver, just south of Castle Rock there, as you can see. It is a traffic nightmare. Again, that looks like northbound. Southbound is shut down, so obviously those vehicles must have been uh, sitting in traffic for quite a long time because as far as we know uh, no opening of I-25 anytime soon. No, we saw a couple people off and on with our traffic cams uh, basically driving um, on I-25. We think like when they weren't supposed to be, if, if you did get on I-25 when it was closed down, you're eventually going to get to a place where you are stopped. And some information for you? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to update that rescue. We got some new information. Um, CSFD sending two high angle rescue teams and they were going to hike up bar trail to this patient who's a little under halfway up. CSFD likely put that patient in a basket, use ropes to bring them down. But again, the thought process here of this person, I cannot I... understand on a day like today, you know, life's full of challenges. These are the kind of challenges that our first responders do not need on a day like today. But again, it is what it is. And they're doing the best they can, as they always do, to try and save lives and protect us and uh, keep us safe. So uh, hats off to firefighters having to do amazing work in these conditions. Uh, I want to check back in with Katie Blaze on some of the things we're hearing from CDOT right now. Yeah, Rob, CDOT always keeping us apprised of what's going on on the roads. Let's take a look at some of the recent tweets they've sent out. This one here at 2.15 p.m., major road closures, I-70 and major roads in the Eastern Plains, I-25 Monument Hill from Ridgegate to Monument, all high mountain passes in southwestern Colorado. Let's take a look at another one here. Multiple spinouts on all major roadways across the state. Rapidly deteriorating conditions have made for very dangerous conditions on the roadways. Please, people, remember that. That is key today. Looking at another one here, traffic will not be allowed to stay on highways, enclosure areas, CDOT, and other areas, and others will be coming to help people move off the highways and get back to a sheltered location. One more for you here, multiple highways closed across the state with hardest hit areas in the eastern plains, the I-25 corridor, and mountain passes. It is strongly encouraged to stay off the roadways and shelter in place. Just a couple tweets from CDOT there. As always, check in with them if you're looking uh, for announcements, road closures today, things like that. Rob? Katie, thanks. Yeah, CDOT is a great resource as far as uh, conditions, because they cover the entire state. They'll tell you any kind of situation, yeah. uh, good, bad, or indifferent, if you go to their Twitter page, is basically at Colorado DOT, at Colorado DOT. But again, just sit at home, uh, monitor the computer, look at the tweets, see what's going on. Don't go out and drive, because uh, we can't emphasize enough that it's a very, very dangerous situation out there. And we just wanted to remind folks that uh, if you know of loved ones who may be stranded in a particular place, just wanted to repeat some of these uh, warming shelters that have been set up. Woodman Valley Chapel, Woodman Valley Heights Campus, Peyton High School, Falcon Patriot Learning Center, 
Peyton VFW, uh, St. Paul's in Callahan, St. Peter's in Monument, the New Covenant Church in Larkspur, and the Douglas County Fairgrounds. So help is available. They've been stocking up for the last couple of days in anticipation of this uh, massive storm that we've seen, this uh, bomb cyclone that they were calling yep. it, uh, bombogenesis. Uh, but it's, it's a term Ulmer. That's... Ulmer is the name of this storm, correct? It's... U-L-M-E-R, Ulmer. Yeah. I, that is one thing I have never seen. You know, you asked about, is this the worst I've ever seen since I've been here? I have never experienced the naming of a blizzard. This is a first for Rob uh, that, in 30 you know, years in Colorado that's Springs. That's the Weather Channel doing their thing. The National Weather Service isn't other opinion, but bombogenesis, bomb cyclone, that's been around for a while. I have heard those before. Exactly. It's been around for a while. It was just like last year. Some producer thought, let's give it a new flashy name, and it trended. All right, here's the weather again, basically the snow. It ended up being really heavy up to Denver still, through Colorado Springs, through Teller County. We haven't cut this back yet. Thank goodness, most major impact schools, most schools went ahead and called it a day out there. So thankfully we got the kids not really at school. It can just be home away from the system. Starting to get again more and more of a gap towards El Paso County and Teller County, or excuse me, Teller County and Fremont County. So maybe some breaks there. Rob, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we just got an urgent message from the city of Colorado Springs. Here's the deal. We can't emphasize this enough. So many vehicles are stranded on the streets of Colorado Springs right now. It is preventing plows from getting through to be able to clear these roads so that people can travel safely. The city of Colorado Springs is saying, please, please stay off the roads. We can't say this enough. Plows are not able to get to places now. 500 plus drivers are now stranded in the Colorado Springs metro area. The city is putting out an urgent warning to people stay indoors again i understand that some businesses may have been open for a while folks are trying to get home but the looky loser or whatever else you need you should have been prepared beforehand uh loading up on food water etc at your home because we knew this was coming schools were canceled a day in advance which is a brilliant move yep. hadn't seen that a lot either that is something no. that they're anticipating your weather forecasts and those from uh, other agencies, the National Weather Service, spot on. That's what they base those decisions on. That's what we've seen. That's why they were telling people. That's why we are telling people to prepare. Obviously, we have to deal with the circumstances right now. We can't change what people have done. But how about everybody from right now, 227-21 on the clock, let's stay home. Don't go out and drive unless it's an absolute emergency because we need these first responders Plow drivers be able to get through, clear our streets. It's a mess out there. Even a front, so Rob, I drive a front wheel drive Honda Accord. It's a decently heavy sedan, but front wheel drive, I wouldn't be able to make it up right. Nevada uh, when it goes south towards 115. In my place, I wouldn't be able to make it up the hill. No, even I mean, if you have a, small inclines, I've seen cars yeah. spin out as I was heading in. Even so. if you have all wheel drive, four wheel right. drive, it's going to be tough. I mean, a tire tries to grip the road. There's ice and snow underneath. It doesn't matter how many wheels you have spinning. It can be stuck. And that, that's incredible, Rob. You can barely right. see out in front of the camera. That's the big misconception, people think. I have a four-wheel drive vehicle. It's got huge tires. Well, you're still in a pickle. Even if there's yep. ice on the road or that slushy conditions, you're still obviously got a little better traction, but you're still going to have issues uh, in some very difficult well, spots. Well, you can't see. You mentioned when you were coming in, you could barely see the traffic lights. Uh, a friend of mine, Greg, driving through town, says tons of the intersections, the lights are down. And so let's say you treat it as a four-way stop. You won't be able to see somebody barreling across in front of you in an intersection, even if they're being irresponsible. What if they can't stop in time? That's I was of uh, Speaking of that, I was uh, stopped at uh, Woodman just before I-25, and someone came pulling right up onto the... Uh, the center median because oh. they were dry looked like they were driving up on it and they came by and I rolled down my window I'm like what's up man and they're like hey I think I was going too fast did I hit you I'm like you really need to, to pump the brakes literally on and be cognizant of what these conditions are okay enough of my preaching on how to drive in uh, snowy conditions and icy yeah. conditions but we do want to continue to emphasize we need to get those plows out and first responders let's check in with Teller County once again our Allison Zimmerman with an update from Woodland Park Oh, okay. 
Yeah, hey Rob, we are up here along Highway 24 once again, and we know that this snow is coming down quickly just because the footprints that we left about an hour ago are already filling up here. So this snow is coming down quick. We've got a plow coming or a truck with a plow attached to it. He's driving right by me right here. Uh, but the wind has just really picked up in the last hour. Once again, we are seeing snow come off of all of these uh, roofs and businesses, and it's getting really messy out here. But the good news is we have seen some plow uh, making their way through Highway 24 to try and get these roads clear. But really, you can see it's pretty snow packed and it is just messy. You want to take it slow. Again, as I've mentioned, we've been seeing many cars driving through here. I uh, think they've been taking it slow. They haven't been getting too overconfident about driving in these conditions. But Teller County Sheriff's Office is also warning people to just stay home because the visibility out here is awful. In most places, it's less than 100 feet, and you can kind of see how that wind is starting to pick it up. The snow is blowing out here making for conditions that you really just don't want to drive in. And as you've mentioned, Woodland Park schools have already called off for tomorrow uh, just because of the blizzard conditions that we're seeing here. We're already seeing uh, some Jeeps, it looks like, drive out on Highway 24 as well. Uh, some places reporting about a foot of snow up here. So they are getting a solid dumping of snow in this area. But that wind is what's causing some issues. And again, this is nothing like what they're seeing out in eastern El Paso County, but it's still not something you want to be messing with. Teller County Sheriff's Office once again just telling people be smart about all of this. This is not something that you want to be driving in unless it is an absolute emergency. Stay at home if you can. We'll send things back to you guys. All right, studio. Allison Zimmerman with a friendly reminder up in Woodland Park where they're getting their fair share of snow. And again, as she mentioned, school is closed there on Thursday. Again, uh, something uh, Jeff Matthews, our meteorologist, mentioned just a couple of minutes ago while we were listening to Allison about ham radio operators yeah. out in the area. Those folks have, they are tuned in to different things that uh, the normal citizen is not, have critical, critical information. So if you hear something or know something and you are a ham radio operator in terms of closures, uh, people stranded, emergency situations, uh, what have you, please uh, give us a call here at News 5 so we can then pass that information on. Ham radio, that is old school. They generally don't have as a wide a berth as social no. media does now. But, hey, if you can help us with that information, we can then help other people by getting that out on our uh, social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, we got it covered. So that, that's a, a great thought. Absolutely. And hey, if we can, let me hop on the weather wall and just do another breakdown. It's been a little bit of this storm from top to bottom. So if we can, we'll pull up weather one and I'll walk over and break it down. So we still have, and I'll walk over now, heavy, heavy snow up into Denver. This band has now moved away from southeast Colorado, the center of the storm, more so towards Kansas. And that has now put the strongest oh, yeah. part of this storm centered right over Denver. But don't be fooled, incredibly heavy snow still falling right into the Palmer Divide, Monument Hill, Teller County, Monument Hill. Let's zoom in a lot closer. As I mentioned, perhaps a couple signs that were coming in towards the weaker cycle of this system a little bit more of a break down highway 67 but we just saw allison still tremendous snow falling in woodland park highway 24 out to lake george 67 to cripple creek you pass 24 coming back into colorado springs springs itself Highway 24 East, Highway 94 East, Highway 94 East, we had an 85 mile per hour gust in Truckton earlier. The wind is incredible and the snow has just not stopped as a solid, moderate to at times incredibly heavy band of snow with continued super strong wind and snow over the top of Monument Hill. Haven't heard reports of flooding in Pueblo and while it is unlikely that would happen, we have had consistent heavy rain down in that part of the area from the morning. I was covering this all the way from about six, seven o'clock right into now with snow still trying to come to the northwest side of town, northeast side of town, but more of it is rain. The wind gust we remember had a 97 mile per hour gust over the Colorado Springs airport. 
Found out from Jessica Van Meter, a meteorologist that did set the new record. The closest one has got to be Cheyenne Mountain. That was a 101 mile per hour wind gust, but we set a new record at the airport today. And the winds are still what I would consider dangerous, blowing and gusting over 70 miles per hour. So, Rob, even though the snow is still going hard, the winds are a touch less intense, not 100. This is far from being over, and it's still extremely dangerous to be out. As you mentioned, Rob, the plow situation is by far the most awful part of the system. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, sir. And we want to check back in with Bill Folsom and uh, Falcon. Uh, Bill, uh, tell us about that bus behind you. What's going on right now? Well, this is uh, bringing some people in who work out here in the county. They were stranded out. I believe they work at a greenhouse. <coughs> They're all actually right behind us right now. We can swing around not too wide there. They came in to get out of the snow, so they are happy to be here where it's warm, and i got a bus coming at me right now trying to turn around. <coughs> so, Adam, they brought in a bus to get them out, workers from a greenhouse, and that's the situation going on here at Falcon. Not just people stranded, but people who were at work and needed a place to go. I'm hearing that that greenhouse may have had some panels taken off the top of it, cold air going into it, so not a good place to be. Out here, I don't remember, a half an hour ago, this was about right here it's the way it's piling up <coughs> about six inches about every half hour coming down we got the wind whipping out here you can see that bus trying to get out here it doesn't have to go very far and you lose anything you're looking at so it's taken them a while to get in here where it's safe <coughs> just putting down roads the greenhouse we're talking about is just down the road in pavement two or three miles down the road the other thing i should point out is we're talking about that greenhouse that lost its uh, roof there are other things out here with those 80, 90 mile an hour gusts being ripped off. We were over at the gas station that you can't see because of the whiteout, but over there they have <coughs> part of it being peeled off. Some of the um, fleshing or uh, fascia on the front of the building there is peeled away. We're seeing signs that are road signs under the road that have been twisted sideways. So not only is it a dangerous situation right now, there is damage happening. So hopefully people are staying inside. We haven't had a problem here because we're fairly protected of things flying, causing a danger flying at us. But we are seeing roofs being peeled off, signs being destroyed, wind is just blowing out here really hard, and it is cold. My head, hood's come off out here, and I can tell you I'm already, in just the 60 seconds we've been talking, getting some numbness going here. So I'm going to come back in just a little bit closer. I have to say the few businesses that are open out here are being kind, offering people some coffee to keep them warm, a place to get out of the, the uh, cold out here. A few people with the mega four wheel drives, we've seen them pulling up, coming to get a few groceries. But uh, right now, anybody out here, we all got a bunch of new best friends. We're all hanging out here, trying to stay warm, hunker down, and that's what everybody else needs to do. Let us show you what's going on. We got the weather team. We've got News 5 people all over the place. We're staying in warm locations where we can step out, show you the situation and uh, stay on top of this. It is a uh, very tough, cold, windy place to be out here in Falcon right now. Watching out for you, Eastern El Paso County, Bill Folsom, News 5. Bill, thanks. That was the best uh, live shot we've seen all day. All those happy faces of those folks who have been transferred into that warm confine to be able to uh, get something to eat, something to drink. Thank goodness they are okay, and Bill was there to tell us about it. Thank you, Bill. Want to take a live look in Denver right now, and as you can see, uh, more of the same. Just to give you a couple of uh, bits of information, we we're told a whole lot of people are stuck on I-25 through the Denver metro area. That's number one. A lot of trees have been toppled. They're getting those massive wind gusts up there. Power outages as well. We're told something in the neighborhood of 27-inch snow drifts just in the Elizabeth area. That's just a little bit south of Denver between Castle Rock and Denver uh, east of or excuse me, west of I-25 there in that corridor. But anyway, uh, no relief as you head further north. And again, I-25 between basically Woodman Road and Denver is continuing to be a mess as we take that uh, traveling look there of some of the uh, circumstances going on in the Denver metro area right now, pretty much uh, more of the same. So again, if you have loved ones in uh, the Denver area, we're trying to get back home, we're heading up. Uh, Let's hope they make it home safely, but for now, it doesn't look like a lot of movement. Speaking of which, there's a look. Uh, again, this is Lake Gulch Road. That's, again, a little south of Denver. I-25, Ghost Town. No traffic moving north or south as those wind gusts continue, the snow continues to fall. Those plows are doing what they can 
in those windows of opportunity that they have when the visibility allows them to do that. But for the most part, this circumstance is going to continue for the next several hours as the uh, winds are not going to go away. The snow may lessen, as Sam Schreier told us earlier, but again, it's going to continue to move that snow. And then as the sun goes down, it's going to make it even more treacherous. But uh, CDOT crews, county, city crews trying to do the best they can to clear what they can. And again, the report in uh, Colorado Springs, well, there's, uh, can't tell if that's an emergency vehicle or not, but one car. But again, just a reminder in Colorado Springs, uh, plows unable to go onto a lot of the main streets because there's so many drivers stranded right now and they're just urging everyone please remove move your car to the side if you can at the very least uh, but the best case scenario is don't leave your home uh, stay where you are let these crews get out and do their job let's check back in with Zach Thaxton who is live in Monument for us Zach Yeah, intermittently, uh, the visibility is improving just a little bit. Can see uh, at this point the intersection. Uh, however, uh, as the gusts come, the snow okay. becomes more blinding. The power is out here, so the intersection is not illuminated anyway. That is only exacerbating the problems up here uh, because uh, these blind intersections become always stops if in case there is multiple vehicles at the intersection. Uh, there's a gentleman here uh, driving an H2 who has pulled over is sort of holding down the fort by himself here. Uh, sir, introduce yourself and explain how you ended up here uh, sort of stuck in Monument. Well, I'm Ed from Lakewood, and nice to talk to everybody here. And actually, I was headed up from an appointment earlier in the springs, and you know, early this morning, 9, 10 o'clock, it was pretty clear down there, but as I came down the corridor, I saw a lot of accidents, and I figured maybe I should just turn around and cancel the appointment, but you know, kind of like the post office, I was making it to my appointment for my job. Uh, once I got out and got back, you know, discovered the roads were pretty bad, and I'm trying to make it up the corridor from I-25, it's uh, just terrible. You know, cars stuck everywhere, accidents, uh, you know, cars off the side of the road. Um, you know, truck stopping over, putting their trains, uh, chains on. Um, and actually, I was fortunate enough because I have my Hummer and um, I was coming up the uh, I-25 and I uh, couldn't make it to the, up the Baptist uh, exit because uh, it was uh, just, it was stuck with tractor trailers, jackknives. Uh, so I was able to make it to the following exit at the monument here uh, and discovered, you know, everything shut down. So I'm just hunkering down in, in my uh, Hummer hotel here, I guess I'll call it. And um, <laughs> I just got some people helping me with some texts and they're saying, uh, in Monument, St. Peter's uh, Church is open as a warming center if you can get to it. And also got a text uh, from a good friend of mine down in the Springs saying, City of Colorado Springs is urging people to stay off the roads in town. Over 500 stranded vehicles and the plows aren't able to uh, make it through right now. Definitely heeding the advice uh, that our anchor Rob Quirk was saying, you know, stay in tune with uh, the social media posts and the web postings to see what's available for shelter, see what the road conditions are. You've done that, obviously. You have a formidable vehicle here, uh, and even that is not enough to overcome the elements. Uh, what do you say to people who just might think, oh, well, I've lived in Colorado long enough. I know how to handle this stuff. I can I can do this. Yeah, no, this is pretty serious business. I would stay off the road. Um, and, you know, I was recommended to stay off the road. I watched the news, and, you know, I went ahead and went to my appointment. Uh, big mistake, and I'm lucky. My wife actually was able to make it home. She's only five minutes from our house in Lakewood, and uh, we have eight pets. So I'm just glad she made it home so, you know, our pets aren't stranded at home as well. Now that's Ed. Think about all those other things as well. Thanks, Ed. Ed from uh, Lakewood, right? Yeah, from, Lakewood. from Lakewood. All right. Uh, I'm going to sort of walk a distance here and sh give you a perspective of, of visibility. Uh, we'll see how far I can go before I start to fade. And you can see how deep also this snow is, uh, knee deep as I walk through it. But as I walk over here towards the sidewalk along Highway 105, uh, it becomes more and more difficult to see me. And I, I am having a difficult time seeing uh, our photographer, uh, J uh, Juice Godfrey. So this is what's going on in Monument right now. Visibility is incredibly difficult, if not impossible. The few cars that are out um, are ill-advised to do so. Uh, who knows what circumstance they may be under to where they feel like they have to go out and travel. But uh, as long as the snow remains and the wind blows, not recommended. And by the way, once it comes time to start clearing this snow, it is almost like cement. The granules are so small and fine that they pack very densely. So 
uh, once you get out the snowblower and the shovel, it's going to be really difficult to move all this because it's like a really fine sand. It's not the, the light flakes you might get with a, uh, a January or February uh, gentle snowstorm. Uh, so uh, that's uh, the situation for now. We'll be checking in uh, momentarily uh, once again, but uh, Rob, we'll send it back to you. All right, Zach, just saw a plow go by behind you, so there is a hope that those roads will uh, continue to be clear. And there's a live look right now in Colorado Springs. We just got word... 100 plus cars right now are stuck just on Woodman Road, primarily those folks who are headed eastbound on Woodman. But again, it has been a mess, particularly eastbound for the last hour or so. And as you heard from Zach, you really need to heed those warnings to get off the streets if you can. And we have a new uh, word, the uh, Hummer Hotel. And that gentleman telling you he made a mistake by deciding to try and get to an appointment today wound up stuck in the middle of it. Now he is spending however long in his Hummer Hotel there in Monument uh, waiting out the storm. But again, he admitted he shouldn't have done it. He did it. Now he has to deal with the consequences, but thankfully his wife uh, made it back home okay. Let's check in with uh, Jessica Van Meter with uh, more on these road and street conditions. Jessica. Yeah, guys, plenty of issues on those roads. You can see a lot of those sky cams. You can't even tell where we're looking in the city of Colorado Springs there. Obviously, that's pointing northwest, so facing towards some of those very strong wind gusts we've had and a lot of that blowing snow blowing towards the camera right now. As Rob mentioned, about 100 people reported stranded in their vehicles on Woodman. We've had various closures throughout the day. I-25 is really the big one so far today. That is closed all the way from Woodman Road in Colorado Springs up to Lone Tree outside of the Denver metro area. That's about 46.5 miles of that interstate that is closed. Areas of Highway 83 are closed uh, just north of Colorado, uh, the Palmer Divide area and east of I-25. So obviously that's not a good alternative route. There's no really good route to get between Colorado Springs and Denver for today. And with our wind coming mainly from the north, a lot of those east-west highways having big issues today. Uh, areas of Colorado 86 closed, heading out towards the plains from the Denver area. Areas of Highway 24 from Falcon all the way out towards Lyman closed in both directions there. 94 east of Colorado Springs out towards the county line also closed. And aside from those actual closures, any of the roads themselves dealing with big delays. You can see a lot of orange, a lot of red showing up on the maps, particularly I-25, especially as you get up to the point where we have closures. We mentioned Woodman has been a big issue. Woodman and Powers right now experiencing a lot of delays out towards Black Forest. They've had inches and inches of snow. I believe eight or nine inches was the last report we had from Black Forest. So obviously a lot of issues heading out that way. Now, we did have that big wind gust in the Colorado Springs Airport, 97 miles per hour out there. That was obviously a concern. Aside from that, we've gotten a lot of rain and a lot of snow. We've actually broken the record for daily precipitation at the airport, and that was as of noon, with 0.39 inches. That breaks the old record by about eight hundredths of an inch. Now, that was at noon, so obviously we're going to keep adding to that as we go throughout the day. That snow going to continue to fall for many areas, so keep that in mind. Just a dangerous situation on those roads, Rob. And, you know, if you want to get out and go somewhere, you just can't at this right. point. So you're better off just staying exactly where you are, whether that's home, work. You just don't want to be out on these roads right yes, now. Yes, uh, great advice. Thank you. I wanted to talk for a second about situation in Pueblo. Wait a minute. First, yeah, we want to check the high country. That's I-70. Actually, that looks pretty good. Uh, you can see the roads are just wet up there. Obviously, the bulk of the storm is to the east of the Continental Divide. But again, uh, avalanche control work was going on along Vail Pass uh, in the last several minutes. But again, it just reopened, so Vail Pass is back open. But boy, look at I-70, at least west of Denver. That looks pretty good. East, that's a whole other story, as you just heard from Jessica. I-70, 94, 24, 86. Bad, bad news. All right, I want to talk about Pueblo real quick. Um, there is some power outage. <laughs> excuse me, some power outages in Pueblo. There's a photo from one of our viewers about just how bad the situation is there. Trees have been uprooted. They've knocked down power lines. Power poles have been downed as well. We're told that on the north side in particular, there are power outages right now. We don't have a number on just how many homes and businesses are affected, but this is a common scene not only in Pueblo, but also in Colorado Springs as well and other communities with these gusting winds that are just... Uh, <laughs> 
hurricane force at this point. Now, we want to talk a little bit more about outages in and around our area. Let's check in with Patrick Nelson here in studio. Rob, one thing uh, that I learned today is I had a chance to have a conversation with Mayor Southers here in Colorado Springs, and this is actually the first large weather event where they've been able to deploy the Pikes Peak Region Office of Emergency Management. So that's a collaboration from both the city and the county coming together, and they're saying that that's really helping uh, their response. But there certainly are a lot of different layers, different veins, when you have a storm like this that they're having to keep an eye on. Everything from power to, we talked about those trees being down, so there's forestry officials dealing with that. Even for folks who don't have shelter or homeless folks, a place for them to go. All these things are being coordinated. Right now, there's actually a war room uh, full of people answering phones. They're deploying resources on the streets, things of that nature. We just wanted to show you real fast a few resources online. I mean, obviously, if you don't have access to a computer, these are things that you can also maybe pull up on your smartphone. But this is uh, the City of Colorado Springs website, and this is the Office of Emergency Management on here, a lot of it is about preparing before the storm. So we hope that uh, folks have been listening to some of the warnings we've had coming into this week. But many, many resources here as far as ways to be prepared for the storm, especially if you have to go out. We've been saying all day long, bad idea to go out if you can hunker down, try to do your best. But I know we've been hearing from folks across uh, the Colorado Springs area that there's even been situations where lights are flickering on and off, power, people aren't sure if it's going to go out. So take the proper precautions there as well. Now one thing I wanted to show you is there's been a full call out on the plows in the El Paso County, Colorado Springs region and they know this is not going to be something that they're going to be able to address quickly. Uh, one thing the mayor uh, mentioned to me in my conversation with him is the fact that we have such a strong wind out there as the snow comes down even when the snow stops, it's going to be blowing around. So areas that plows have hit previously, they're going to have to go back and hit it again. So tomorrow, these plow drivers are going to have to work a lot of these primary and secondary routes uh, again and again to make sure to try to get this clear uh, tomorrow. So you'll want to stay tuned to us uh, for information on schools, work closings, things like that before you try to head on the, out on the roads even tomorrow. Now, talking about uh, those power outages, uh, Colorado Springs Utilities, they actually have a portion on their website that you can go to. It says during a storm. That's where you can find the online outage map. And we have that pulled up here and you can see this is just for Colorado Springs alone. And you can see these are all the different incidents right now that uh, the folks are working at Springs Utilities. Uh, I want to pull up this one here. Let's see. So there's uh, 58 outages in this area. Let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Looks like uh, this is all kind of East Colorado Springs. You can see a lot of folks dealing with outages in that area. Let me uh, try to pull that up again. I'm gonna zoom out so we can kind of get the big picture here. So again, pulling that up, just in that area of East Springs, uh, 2,543 customers affected. So certainly if you're dealing with some issues with your power, you are not alone. There's a lot going on across the area. And real quick, um, we are going to pull up. This is for Black Hills Energy. I'm hoping it'll maybe give us a little bit of an update here as to what's going on down in Pueblo when it comes to the power outages. Let's zoom in on that area here. And it looks like they haven't necessarily updated uh, the outage there just yet, but certainly uh, as Rob already reported, we are on top of it here. But again, we've got uh, a lot of staff here in our newsroom working really around the clock at this point. A lot of folks that have been here throughout the night digging into these things to try to keep you updated. So certainly we're working with the Pikes Peak Region Office of Emergency Management to get the latest information from them. But really, as Rob mentioned earlier, the biggest thing is hunker down, stay home. Don't go out if you have to, because honestly, for these first responders, it's, it's very dangerous for them to go out and try to rescue you. So if you can stay home and stay safe, that's really going to be the best for everyone. So we'll continue working here. We'll have much more for you on what's going on out there uh, throughout the day. Back to you. All right, Patrick, great information. Thank you, sir. What a great move it was to see the city and the county emergency management folks come together, coordinate resources, and basically this is the kind of scenario we're seeing today that benefits when we have everybody on the same page. There's another live look at some of those uh, nasty weather conditions uh, 
This is the Denver cam again, or the Denver area, yes, and uh, they've received massive amounts of snow as well. Uh, just a driving shot here from uh, one of our uh, sister stations up in Denver showing us what conditions are up there. A little jumpy, but you get the, uh, the point. Hey, Mike Daniels is here. Thanks to Sam Schreier, the morning team, Bree, everybody else. Mike, take it away. Rob, a storm of legendary proportions going on, and it's centered across northern El Paso County up into Metro Denver. There's a live look in Colorado Springs. That's Austin Bluffs near Nevada. Whiteout conditions across the area. The wind is really the driving force with this storm system, creating those blizzard conditions across our area. While swinging a miss here on our clicker, just uh, wanted to show you what's going on across the area. So let's try another one, see if we can go through these pictures. There's a live look from Pueblo right now. A lot of wind, but it's dry in Pueblo. They had some real moderate to heavy rain across parts of Pueblo earlier today during the morning hours into the afternoon. But again, it's dry across the Steel City right now. There's a live look from the downtown area. Just a lot of gusty wind in Pueblo right now. There's a live look from Trinidad. You are dry as well. And how about Woodland Park? That's a live picture from Woodland Park. Whiteout conditions up there. The wind up in Woodland Park, not quite as bad as what we're dealing with here along I-25 in points east, but make no mistake, this is a very dangerous storm system. Gave you the first alert on this thing last week, and here it is, performing exactly like we thought it would. The area of low pressure has pushed across northern New Mexico. Now it's all the way to the Kansas border. But what happened? That storm drug down a cold front earlier this morning, and now we're dealing with those wind gusts from 70 to 85 miles per hour. The snow is going to continue at least through this evening for some areas, and for parts of El Paso County, I think that snow is actually going to continue through tomorrow morning at times. Wind gusts have just been incredible in Colorado Springs. If you're just joining us, we had a gust last hour at 97 miles per hour. That represents the strongest wind gust we've ever had in Colorado Springs. And unfortunately, it has to come with snow. You wouldn't mind maybe if it was during a thunderstorm when it'll just hit and miss, but that's really what's creating the problems, the winds. We had a peak gust in Truckton at 85, Black Forest right behind that, Otero County, a gust at 81, and Pueblo blend is just east of the city, a gust hurricane force at 74 miles per hour. Please keep in mind that blizzard warning is going to be active for northern El Paso County until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for Colorado Springs South until midnight tonight. Again, as we've been telling you, this is a storm you don't want to mess with. You don't want to get outside. I drove up uh, through uh, I-25 earlier today, and it is just impossible to see just uh, maybe 20, 30 yards in front of you. We do have a winter storm warning still active for Teller County. The winds in Teller County, not quite as strong as what we're dealing with here. That's why they're under a winter storm storm warning and we've got the blizzard warning here across most parts of El Paso County. Pueblo in southeastern Colorado, you're under that high wind warning for the rest of the day today. Gusts 70 to 85 miles per hour possible. Take a look at what we're experiencing with those gusts right now at the Springs Airport. It's calmed down significantly. We had a gust earlier, as we said, at 97 miles per hour, but there it is at the Pueblo Airport gusting to 75 miles per hour. Very strong across the La Hunta area. You're going to see wind damage when you get wind that strong. You will certainly sustain some wind wind damage, seeing lighter winds across portions of uh, Teller County up into northern El Paso County. Here's what we think the wind is going to do. This is one of our computer models. This is later this afternoon. We're going to see those winds continue across the area. Four o'clock this afternoon, still gusts possible into the mid and upper 70s across Colorado Springs and Pueblo, but very strong wind across most parts of southeastern Colorado in the News 5 viewing area. As we go into the evening hours, we'll start to see the winds die off a little. They're not going to completely go away, but at least I think the worst is going to be over within the next couple of hours with the wind, at least along I-25, and I'll show you why in just a second when we show you the progress of the storm. But even at 10 o'clock tonight, we're still dealing with gusts of 55 miles per hour in the springs, 48 miles per hour across the Pueblo area as we work into the overnight hours. Uh, wind starting to taper down just a little bit across Pueblo, but still pretty gusty across Colorado Springs and points northeast. Now, here's what's going on. You can see it for yourself, that counterclockwise circulation right there. That's the main energy with this storm, and it is just an incredibly powerful storm system. The pressure with this thing equal to a Category 2 hurricane, which is just mind-boggling. Here's what's going to happen. That thing is going to gradually lift off to the north and east, and that's what we want to see. As this thing finally lifts away from us, lifts off to the north and east, the pressure gradient at the surface is going to start to relax. Once that pressure gradient starts to relax, we'll start to see the winds start to taper down across our area. But you can just see the counterclockwise circulation swirling all those bands of moisture across northern Colorado again.
The heaviest snow falling right now from Metro Denver, also up to the Wyoming border, all the way down into portions of northern El Paso County. Still warm enough for some rain shower activity across parts of southern Colorado, but again, just a massive storm. Wanted to show you the perspective, how big this storm stretches, almost right across the Canadian border, all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico with that storm system. So again, just a monster storm system impacting a good chunk of the United States right now. A little closer look at radar, you can see the snow band stretching from Colorado Springs all the way north. Again, in parts of Pueblo, still warm enough for a little bit of light rain shower activity. A little bit of break from downtown Colorado Springs to a wide field, and that's what happens when you get that strong wind circulating out of the north. It's a downslope component as it pushes down the Palmer Divide, just like you might see a westerly wind create warmer, drier air as it comes down the mountains to the west of us. That's what's happening here, the higher elevation of the Palmer Divide, downsloping, and that's why you're seeing that break in the snow right now, just south of Pueblo, getting some pretty good rain bands right now. Head back into the wet mountains and wet mountain valley. It's all snow shower activity, but getting some good beneficial soaking rains across parts of southeastern Colorado right now. The rain and snow stretching all the way down to the New Mexico border. Again, a lot of intensity with this storm system. It's going to stay with us for the rest of the afternoon. Starting to taper down snow-wise in many areas later tonight, but again, across far northern El Paso County, I think you may be dealing with snow along the Palmer Divide through tomorrow morning at times. So let me take you through this before I toss it back to Rob. This is 5 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to see those heaviest snow bands right across northern El Paso County as they come over the divide. But from uh, downtown Colorado Springs south to Pueblo, I think you'll see mainly dry conditions. That pattern will continue through the evening hours around here. Getting a break overnight. This is 2.30 tomorrow morning. Most of the snow trying to wrap up. At least the worst of the snow will be over. But even as early as 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, could see, operative word could, see a couple of bands of snow across portions of northern El Paso County. So the worst probably over in many areas right now, but it's still a very powerful, very dangerous storm system. Rob? Mike, thanks. And let's continue to check on those uh, traffic conditions. We take a live look outside once again at this hour. And again, it's been uh, a very difficult situation for several hours now. There's I-25 at Guard of the Gods. Limited traffic. That's good news. Again, the official closure is from Woodman Road north into the Denver metro area. So see a little bit of traffic anyway from uh, Woodman South. You see a few cars on the highway again. But uh, we are just, again, can't emphasize enough that people just need to stay off the roads unless it's an absolute emergency. And again, local law enforcement, first responders, they are only responding to those level one critical emergency calls. Please do not call 911 if you got a situation that's anything but life and death. So we just want to reemphasize that again. But again, as Mike mentioned, uh, the situation will continue for several more hours. Some of the plows there you see trying to get through when the visibility is appropriate. But again, that situation between Woodman Road and Denver is nasty, and we've seen some plow go through that corridor, but not a lot. So those conditions continue to be very, very treacherous. Let's check back in with Bill Folsom, who yeah. is uh, standing by at his uh, location at the Safeway store there in Falcon. Yeah, the wind is just cranking out here. We've learned a little more about that bus that came in here. That some workers who work out at a greenhouse in Peyton. That's only four or five miles down the road. <clears throat> I'm a little broken English, but my understanding is that they left about 11 o'clock this morning just to come that distance to get here. Took three and a half, maybe four hours. They weren't exactly sure, but that's how long it took just to go. Reason not to be out on the road. They needed to get out of there. The roof had come off. There was cold air going on. They actually were needing to get back into Colorado Springs, but this is where they made it, come in here to get a sandwich or two. We're going to walk out and show you. It is drifting out here. I'm going to take my chances and see and show you just a couple things while I'm coming out here. <laughs> One is what the wind's doing. There was some rain here earlier. And I don't know if you can see this, but there is a ripple across here where it's created ice. So there's a few people that we see coming in. They're really not only having to brace against this wind, but they're having to step across ice. And that is what has happened on the roads. I'm in a parking lot, so it's safe to be out here showing you what's going on. But it is thick. It's kind of like a, a wavy, like a scale on the back of a, a lizard or something, but larger that's going on out here. I'm going to see if I can make it out here to our truck, which shows you some of the visibility issues. If you start, whoa, start to lose me, I apologize, but I just wanted to show you if I come out here, if you try and open a door, it is a two-handed thing to do out here. <coughs> Just do it. So if I can stand inside, maybe you can hear me. But you stand here, and it pushes you in, and you just really can feel those gusts. So visibility-wise, that's 7 News 5 right there. 
if you can't see it. We're getting covered with ice. But the snow out here, it is going this direction. It is cold. It is icy. There are drifts happening out here. There is damage happening. People are working their way in. We're on the other side of where you're talking about, that Woodman Road, where there is 100 cars stranded. We came about 10 this morning. We could see how that happened. We had moments as we were coming out that we lost all visibility. And what we were doing was we were looking at the tracks on the road, using our GPS going, okay, we've got one mile to go, knowing that we were closer here, wanting to get off that road and knowing that it was getting worse. So as you recall, a few years back, Rob, I was out here getting some video, got stuck on that road, sat there for six hours. If you're in your car, use the safety precautions. Make sure you crack a window. If you have exhaust coming in there, it'll kill you. You need to be cautious about that, trying to stay warm out there. Snow starts to build up on that exhaust pipe, get out and knock it away. Otherwise, stay in your cars. If you maybe are listening on our app, their uh, emergency management is aware that you are out there. So, roads out here, blocked off, a few people getting around, but really it is just totally a white out here. People need to use a lot of caution. We're going to toss it back to you. Watching out for you, Eastern El Paso County, Bill Folsom, News 5. Stay safe. And again, it doesn't look like the conditions out there in Falcon have lessened at all. In fact, it just has been the same scenario for hour upon hour. And as you heard, that busload of folks finally delivered there at the Safeway, safe and sound. But it took them anywhere from three to four hours to get just a short distance. And we've heard a lot of that throughout the course of the last several hours. That it's just such uh, poor visibility that people are just having a terrible time trying to get just the shortest distances. And if you really don't know where you're going, uh, some of those landmarks just disappear and you really have to take it extremely cautiously because it's just a life and death situation. But again, we can't encourage folks enough to stay home. And let's talk a little bit more about those uh, street and road conditions. Let's check in once again with Jessica Van Meter. Yeah, thanks, Robin. Obviously, the biggest thing we're dealing with is that blowing, drifting snow and low visibility. It's part of a blizzard, those strong winds and the lack of visibility, whiteout conditions for many area. Visibility currently at zero from Monument all the way up towards the Denver metro area, out towards Lemon, basically zero at Colorado Springs. Also very diminished in Woodland Park. They've seen 11 inches of snow in Woodland Park schools. They're already closed for tomorrow, and those roads have just been getting worse as we've gone throughout the day. There's a look at I-25 and what's supposed to be Garden of the Gods. You can see a couple of cars trying to still make it on the roadways there, but that camera really moving and running. We've, we've had a lot of closures so far today with good reason. In fact, I-25, obviously the most important one. That is closed right now between Woodman Road and Colorado Springs all the way up towards Lone Tree, so just outside the Denver metro area. Highway 83 is also closed between Monument and Franktown, so not really a good way to get up to the Denver metro area right now, nor do you really even want to try it at this point. Uh, El Paso County Sheriff's Office has reported more than 500 stranded drivers around the area right now, 100 of those potentially on Woodman Road. We've been hearing about that. We've also been hearing about stranded drivers at I-25 and Baptist. Can't get on the interstate there. Taking shelter at the Pilot Travel Center right now. A lot of those east-west roads have really been hardest hit. Those winds have been coming mainly from the north. So you get that crosswind. It's hard to drive and really even the snow plows can't pick up with keep up rather with any of that snow that's falling that cleared away. That wind is going to blow that snow right back onto a lot of those highways. So a lot of closures out east as well. We'll see Highway 94 closed from east of Colorado Springs all the way out past the county line. Highway 24 closed from Falcon all the way out towards the Lyman area. Colorado 86 also closed off to the north. So plenty of issues on those roadways. We've also got a lot of traffic lights that have been out. One in particular, traffic signal failure at Shelton and Don Juan, and really through the downtown area and all of Colorado Springs. We've got plenty of areas of red and orange showing up on those maps. I-25 obviously going to be one of those areas south of where we are closed at Woodman all the way down through downtown. Very slow roads there at times. Powers Academy, a lot of those north-south roads, people trying to make their way uh, out on those roadways and just seeing massive backups out there right now. And those winds, as Mike mentioned, going to continue to remain strong. We had that gust 97 miles per hour at the airport in Colorado Springs. That did set a new record, and obviously our airport's also seeing 
big delays and cancellations with this. Colorado Springs Airport, everything is canceled for today. Denver also likely not getting anything out until tomorrow at this point. Uh, my sister was supposed to fly into Denver tonight. She's already not coming in until Friday because of all of these, just to give you an idea of how far those backups are going to keep extending. It'll be a few days before those airports are up and running. So if you do have any flights planned, Rob, I know you're on that list. Be sure to call ahead. Make sure your flight is going before you attempt that drive. Yes, uh, something about March storms and Rob flying somewhere. Three years ago, we were flying out of DIA, and you guys remember that storm. Those of you who were around uh, got stuck in Denver for a day because the airport was closed, as was the interstate. And yes, supposed to fly out tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in Denver. And haven't gotten the word yet about when I may be headed out, but I'm thinking it's going to be a while. But anyway, thank you, Jessica. All right, there is a uh, look right now at our Sam Kramer with a shot from the incline where the Springs Fire Department is uh, trying to secure the rescue of someone who is stuck up there, possibly injured. Let's check in with Sam by phone. Sam, what can you tell us? Yeah, well, Rob, it's, a, it's kind of an interesting situation here. To tell you, you know, first and foremost, the weather, at least at the base of the incline, isn't as bad as it was in Colorado Springs. We had a lot of trouble getting out of town, but here in Manitou, it's really not as bad. The winds aren't as strong, but it's a very serious situation and one that fire departments always prepare for. Now, the reason Springs Fire was called in El Paso County Search and Rescue, they have their hands full out in Falcon. But all we know is a patient, we don't know if it's a man or a woman, is stuck a little bit under halfway up the incline. Don't know their condition, if they're injured or what, but Springs Firefighters, uh, two teams of high angle rescue teams are here. They're hiking up the bar trail, uh, to go make contact with that, with this person, with this patient. Uh, right now they're, they're being stabilized with a paramedic and volunteer firefighter, firefighter from Manatee Springs. But that's really all we know. They're planning on doing some sort of rope rescue on the way down, likely going to put the patient in a basket that has so kind of a larger wheel on the bottom of it, and then control their descent, uh, most likely down the bar trail with those ropes. Uh, so something, you know, that they are prepared for, whether it's summer, fall, winter, doesn't matter the season, but obviously, uh, you know, I spoke with Matthew Springs Fire, uh, the fire department spoke to me, and he said, you know, honestly, look, if you really don't have to hike the trail today, don't do it. It's, these are horrible conditions unless you are you know, an absolute expert and experienced hiker. So, uh, you know, we, we saw them gearing up. They are headed up bar trail right now. It's obviously not visible for us to see. We're not going to hike up there, but uh, an AMR ambulance is actually just pulling up on the scene as well. Uh, so that's about all we have here in Manatee. All right. Sam Kramer, uh, again, a bad day to choose to climb the incline. Uh, let's think about these things before we make those decisions, everybody. This is a horrible situation. Blizzard conditions. Um, Trying to make it through these kinds of uh, circumstances is difficult, and obviously firefighters now having to uh, head up the incline to rescue that person, and as Sam mentioned, put them in some kind of basket, bring them down, don't know the extent of those injuries. Uh, we did get an update from Mountain View Electric. We are seeing power outages all over the place, the Colorado Springs metro area, particularly to the east. Also, we have seen power outages in on the north side of Pueblo. We showed you a photo, trees knocking down power lines, etc. Anyway, Mountain View Electric, if you're a customer, they're saying now that some 18,000 members are without power right now. And in some cases, they say equipment has been damaged. There's no estimate of when they may be able to actually fix those problems and get your power back on. There's a live look in Man excuse me, Woodland Park once again. They've received over a foot of snow, and you can see some of those folks trying to traverse Highway 24 through Woodland Park, but again, urging everybody to stay indoors, even as the winds lighten up again. Um, please, just stay off the road is the uh, best advice. My co-anchor, Elizabeth Watts, finally made it in from home. I know. And you were coming from the general area. I was as well, the northeast side of the Springs. Yes. What an experience that Near was, the, huh? the uh, Air Force Academy area. Right. Yeah, it was a nightmare. And I know we're telling everyone to stay home. And then I took, got a ride to work. But I got a safe ride to work with the 4 by 4s people right. so that I could come here and help inform everyone about Correct. what's going on. So that's why I was out on the roads. Otherwise, I would have stayed home no, today. No, I mean, that is, we, we have to be here. Yes. That We are one of those uh, uh, conduits of information to people. Right. And so, yes, it's uh, legitimate. please, yeah. if you, wherever you are right now, stay there. Do not go outside. I was in the Jeep, the big 4 by 4 Jeep. Right with Joe, they were taking care of me, thank goodness for them. But we were driving by stranded car after stranded car, so much backup, we saw wrecked cars. 
We did see someone get out of their car and try walking. Don't do that either. Stay inside your car. If you do get stranded, help will come for you. But, oh, my goodness, just stay where you are. And you were are. saying that uh, you couldn't even recognize some of the no. intersections as you were driving in. Yes. He picked me up from my house, and then he's like, oh, we're on this road now. And I was like, we are? I had no idea it where we visibility were. Visibility is a major, major you issue. You could not see anything. You have to drive so slow, and then you come up on a stoplight, and then you're you're like, oh, okay, here's a stoplight. I mean, it is crazy. I've never experienced this either, so it's my first time in blizzard conditions like mm -hmm. this, having to be out on the roads. It is so scary. Just please tell your friends, tell your family, stay where you are. If you're at work, have a little party in the break room and just stay there. Right, it That's out. my advice, yes. Right, because conditions eventually will improve. But right. For the time being, they're not, as we take another oh. look there at I-25 at Greenland. And again, that's on top of our studios here in Rock Rimmon, where basically that has been a static shot for the last several hours as the wind is still blowing, the snow is still falling, bitter cold here. And then before you came in, we actually showed a, a photo from, or a live shot from down in near Walsenburg. Mm -hmm. Dry as a bone. Really? No issues. <laughs> Pueblo, Enjoy it's it. clearing a little bit. It was raining there earlier, but it looks better. <laughs> Uh, but what are the current conditions? Let's check in with Mike Daniels again. Guys, the storm is starting to lift a little across portions of northern El Paso County. Again, there's a live look right now at Rock Rim, and the ceiling has lifted quite a bit compared to an hour ago, two hours ago, and three hours ago, the most visibility we've seen in quite some time. But, man, I'm telling you, this storm is a real wind machine. If you're just joining us at the Springs Airport earlier this afternoon, we had a peak gust with this storm at 97 miles per hour, a hurricane force wind gust, 74 or greater. So we've had hurricane force winds up and down the I-25 corridor in points east, trucked in a gust at 85, Black Forest close behind Otero County, a gust at 81, and Bland is just to the east of Pueblo, a 74 mile per hour wind gust earlier this afternoon. Wanted to show you what it looks like out there right now. There's a live look, that's in front of the UCCS campus on Austin Bluffs. Visibility real, real low across the area. That's why we've all been encouraging you to just stay in. You don't want to mess with a storm like this. I've lived here all my life, and this probably ranks in probably the top five of all the dangerous storms I've seen across the area. In Pueblo, look at that. Yes, it's windy, but there's no rain. There's no snow. That's a live look from the west side of Pueblo right now where that wind is just screaming all across the Steel City. Live look from Trinidad. They've got cloudy skies, but it's obviously dry there as well. And then, again, we focus up into Teller County. The cloud ceiling lifted a little bit compared to about 20 minutes ago, but it's still a real dangerous storm system. You can see to the left of your screen, not a whole lot of wind up there. That tree is not really moving a whole heck of a lot. That's why they've got a winter storm warning there, and we've got the blizzard warning here across El Paso County because of the wind. Gave you the first alert on this thing last week, and here's how it all evolved. This uh, storm system tracked across New Mexico. Now it's out across the Kansas border, pushed down this cold front earlier today. Now we're dealing with the wraparound effects of that low, those screaming north winds coming in circulating around that low winds will gust from 70 to 85 miles per hour across parts of the viewing area here for at least the next several hours we've got snow we've got wind so obviously we've got blizzard conditions across the area that blizzard warning will be active for colorado springs until midnight tonight across northern el paso county that blizzard warning is going to be active until six o'clock tomorrow morning and there's that winter storm warning for teller county and far western el paso county we do have a high wind warning for all of southeastern colorado Colorado gusts from 70 to 85 miles per hour. Those of oh, that high wind warning will be active until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Here's what the wind is doing right now in Pueblo. You've got some very strong wind out of the north, gusts at 75 miles per hour, even stronger at La Hunta, gusting up to 83 miles per hour in the springs, almost tame compared to earlier today with that gust at 97 miles per hour. We're under hurricane force, thankfully, again, at 68 miles per hour. Much lighter winds in Woodland Park and the sensor in Monument right now reporting a wind at 17 miles per hour. Here's what the wind is going to do for the rest of the afternoon into the nighttime hours. This is 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, models still suggesting winds could possibly be as strong as 70 miles per hour, but watch as we go into the evening hours starting to taper down. This is 6 o'clock this evening. Winds into the 60s along 
Colorado Springs, Pueblo, most parts of El Paso County. Those winds will be a little stronger as you push a little further east of the I-25 corridor. But again, as we work into the late night hours, still going to be windy, but not as bad as what we're dealing with out there right now. By midnight tonight, still gusting into the 30s and 40s around here. And early tomorrow morning, this is 2 o'clock tomorrow morning, just a breeze in Pueblo at 12, gusting up to 36 miles per hour in Colorado Springs. So hang tough. Uh, the worst of the wind over within the next couple of hours, I think, across Colorado Springs and Pueblo. Here's the culprit. There's that energy right there along the Colorado-Kansas border. You can see that counterclockwise circulation, everything pinwheeling around that. Heavy snow right now just east of Metro Denver, where you see those colors right there, those darker blues. Those are the areas getting the heaviest snow right now. So we're not even getting the heaviest snow across northern El Paso County. It does pick up as you start upsloping across that higher terrain off to the south of Pueblo. And look how big this storm is. Man, this is just a monster. As I told you last night, it would be a monster in the making, and that monster has been made. Take a look. Circulation around that low, pulling up moisture, stretching from the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And yes, I measured it out for you, about 1,300 miles. That's how long the storm is encompassing the intensity. The pressure with this storm was equal to a Category 2 hurricane. That's big. Here's what's going on right now. We've got rain and snow, depending on your location, depending on your elevation here across the viewing area. But again, you can see here from downtown Colorado Springs all the way down to the Pueblo border, the Pueblo uh, El Paso County border, the snow has ended right now. That's that northerly wind flow pushing down the Palmer Divide, drying things out. It's not going to dry it out closer to the Palmer Divide, but it's a, certainly a good sign from downtown Colorado Springs south into Pueblo where it's dry right now. You head up into that higher terrain, the higher the terrain starts to get a little more intense as you go southwest of Pueblo, so you start upsloping once again. Good bands of rain and even snow across uh, portions of Pueblo County. Heading into Fremont County, you've got a rain-snow mix right now in some areas. Head down the I-25 corridor south, a little bit of light snow activity, but again, the focus of the storm, as it will be for the duration of the storm, is going to be across northern El Paso County, Metro Denver points east as well. As we've been telling you, numerous roads closed. I-25 closed northbound between between the north end of Colorado Springs and Denver, 94 closed, 24 is also closed, so a huge problem here. The snow is going to continue again across mainly northern El Paso County throughout the afternoon. Far eastern plains are going to see rain and snow showers combined with that snow, creating some blizzard conditions out there as well. But by 9 o'clock tonight, this model, this is one of our high resolution models, shutting that snowfall down again between Colorado Springs and Pueblo due to that north wind. By midnight tonight, we could see a break across most parts of the viewing area, then again, early Early tomorrow morning, not out of the question to possibly see a little more snow, but nothing compared to what we've been dealing with throughout the morning hours into the afternoon. And I just wanted to pull this up to show you how quick the weather can change around here. Yesterday at this time, we were 38 degrees warmer in Colorado Springs and 35 degrees warmer in Pueblo. You see around here, we go from fun in the sun to go in the snow just like that. Rob, you've lived here. You know how, how it works around here. I do, sir. And again... And what an abrupt change it's been, and <laughs> it's welcome believe. to your first blizzard. Oh, this is crazy stuff, isn't it's it? It's hard to believe. It was it really warm is. last night, even mm -hmm. in the evening. And you then know, you woke up at like 6 o'clock this morning, and it was raining. And right. you're thinking, oh, it's not going to be that bad. But just yeah. as our weather team said, transition to snow, and here we are now. By the way, the uh, governor just announced that they're activating the National Guard to try and help law enforcement communities uh, search and rescue teams across the state to try and pitch in and help get people where they need to be right. safely. That was a good move. And a note from Pueblo, the Connect School is closed due to the wind damage. We've seen all the pictures mm -hmm. from Pueblo, the trees blown over, trampolines in the trees. Please be safe in Pueblo as well. Um, and then we have some pictures to show you in the Falcon area. This is our photojournalist Adam Napix. News 5 truck. wonder how thick the ice is ice. on that, yes. Look at that. They've been out there for hours now with Bill Folsom. Mm -hmm. And now they got some friends because that busload of people that had to be rescued from a nearby business finally were dropped off. And so now that they're safely inside the Safeway where Bill is camped out and we pan to show them all with their smiles on their faces and happy to be somewhere safe. But they said just a short stretch of uh, roadway it took them three and a half hours to get to where they are now. It is so scary out there. If you're you. going to be stuck somewhere, a grocery store is a good place. Yes, to go. absolutely. The silver lining. If there is one. Right. We're going to Allison Zimmerman. She's live in Woodland Park tracking the conditions out there. Allison, how's it going? 
Robin Elizabeth, I will say in the last hour or so, it's gotten a little bit better, but still not perfect out here. The snow has still been coming down, and it's uh, just to give you an idea of kind of our day here. We got here around 1045. Uh, it was snowing then. It has not stopped since then. I'm going to have our photojournalist AJ here pan over so you can get a look at the roads. Um, like I said, we're still seeing uh, many cars drive through here on Highway 24. This is also Midland Avenue. Um, really the all right, our Sorry, signal is see, cutting in and out. Semi. Cutting in and out of Woodland Park. Those things happen right. when there's snow and cold and cables okay. are freezing, etc. So we got the shot back, but temporarily, so we'll bring it back into the studio. We'll get back to you, Allison. Thank you. Try to stay warm out there. And it's just unbelievable to me that Facebook is down today as well. I know. Unbelievable timing because I came in and I was trying to throw out some posts to, again, right. advise people to not go out on the road and right went south so it i don't is. know what the issue is there but again can't right. pay, post on facebook but again there are plenty of other social yes. media uh opportunities here at news 5 instagram Twitter. instagram's down to you oh is it really yes it's down as well right now uh but we do have twitter at koaa5 i believe mm -hmm. or is it just at koaa one of those two and uh koaa.com they are constantly updating that with all the road closures the business closures Everything you need to know is on KOAA.com. Yeah. Some right schools, now. school districts have already canceled Woodland Park and District 49. We expect that other districts will be canceled here in the uh, coming hours, particularly those uh, north and east of Colorado Springs. But again, it's bad everywhere. So I got to think that at some point in the next couple hours, depending on where this storm shifts and the ability to clear roads, etc., we'll be able to uh, determine more closely if those school districts in the area will be able to open back up tomorrow. But it was an excellent call on oh, the part yes. of all the districts yesterday to make that call and get as many people off the streets as possible. So much preparation and we have the city and the county also close it. It was really, really good work on their part. And I know it's hard for them to have to shut down for a day, but it's it, it made total sense. Here we are. It did. <laughs> and again, when you looked out the window at six o'clock this morning, we thought, oh, a little bit of rain, no big deal. Right. And then just as we had forecast in a second, it just switched over to that snow and the blowing mm -hmm. snow. And again, if you're planning on flying out, we can't emphasize again enough. Colorado Springs, it is shut down. Denver Airport, all the runways are closed. No word yet on where or when those flights will begin again. And again, it also comes with the announcement this afternoon from President Trump that the uh, 737s that have been involved in two fatal crashes overseas, they will now be shut down here in the United States. I'm flying Southwest Airlines, uh, hopefully if I can get out right. in the next day or so. Not sure how that's gonna impact. I understand some 250 carriers in their fleet are gonna be affected by that, but it's just uh, piling on in terms of the weather situation. Pena Boulevard going to DIA is closed. Basically, I-25 to Denver is shut down. Highway 83, an alternative route, that's basically cut, shut down from uh, 105 up to Franktown. It's a mess everywhere. It is so bad. There mm -hmm. are several warming shelters available, so if you are stranded, you can make it probably to one of these close by there. Uh, El Paso County, Colorado Springs have opened these up. There's Woodman Valley Chapel, Woodman Valley Heights Campus so on both sides of the springs, Peyton High School, Falcon Patriot Learning Center. Peyton BFD, Calhan St. Paul's, Monument St. Peter's, New Covenant Church in Larkspur, Douglas County Fairgrounds in Castle Rock. So there are places all over the Red Cross is setting up to try and keep you warm and ride this storm out if you need to. And again, the uh, National Guard has been activated by the governor this afternoon now to help. Again, the plows are not being able to get where they need to be as quickly as they can. So we've got an emergency message from the city of Colorado Springs to please stay off the road so those plows can get through at least some of those main arteries, the Woodmans, the Austin Bluffs, et cetera, Platt, those kinds of places, at least initially get some snow clearing. It's amazing to look out the window finally. It doesn't look as dark. It looks like it's lightened up a little, but uh -huh. the snow is still blowing sideways. There's a look out our back door looking to the northwest, and as you can see there, strong winds. The snow has not stopped, and it's a, just a guessing game from our weather team about how much snow is actually falling because, right. frankly, none of it's it, all over the place. It's just drifting. Right. We heard about drifts oh, are like three feet big, high. Oh, and we saw big, big drifts on um, Interquest when we were driving. Huge drifts. And up north, Monument is getting pounded. Our Zach Baxton is there live right now. Zach, 
Tell us what it's like where you are. Still very intense intermittent gusts that absolute create white F with Ed earlier uh, in one of our live uh, hits. And he uh, did not come weather prepared. We're, we're not trying to beat you up, Ed. Oh. All right, that's we're having some issues with Zach's live shot, obviously, because the weather is crazy outside. Jessica Van Meter just said 10 inches have fallen in Monument, where Zach Paxton is right now. And again, on the roads, all the drifts everywhere. My driver, I'm so thankful for Joe with 4 by 4s for getting me to work safely and for being so calm <laughs> and nice. That's because why they're I doing there, it on like, a day like today. I was hitting the brake. I was doing it all, but he was so safe and so nice. And they also, they, um, they were trying to pull cars out, rescue the cars, but they mm -hmm. are turning to just a, trying to get people. They can't, there are so many cars on the roads. They're just going to start focusing on getting people to probably the shelters, right. getting them to a safe space because there were just too many for, for all of the responders to handle. But again, the National Guard has been activated, so hopefully they can help as well. But and it's it is, so much more difficult for people who may be new to the area, haven't experienced this, don't really know where they're going as far as cross streets, etc. And I was saying when I came in at 1 o'clock or whatever it was, you literally had to get right up to the intersection before you could see the green, the red, or the right. yellow, and you hope the person behind you is paying attention as well. I mean, exactly. that's, that's what you're always concerned too. about yeah. is that, and then lights went out at intersections, people, you needed to treat it as a four-way stop, mm -hmm. so if you're doing that, there are some lights down in parts of Colorado Springs due to those power outages, so please. Uh, Follow those rules if you're out right. there. And this is why we say all we we say it all the time, mm -hmm. but have that emergency kit in your car. Right. This is why. Today you need your blanket, you need your snacks, you need your water, so you can just sit there and write it out because you can't get out of the car. So hopefully people are just staying there and waiting for help at this point. Bill Folsom is standing by once again in Falcon with some of those folks who have been dropped off there at his location. Bill? Yeah, they've been very kind here to let people come in and get warmed up. In fact, Tillman Nelson just came walking in here. You've been out on the roads. What's it like out there? Oh, it's a mess. It is a mess. Total ice, um, visibility. I was following another truck about two feet from his bumper, and I couldn't see his rearview mirrors. It was that, uh, that much of a whiteout. I was trying to make it home, and uh, we got turned around up the road at um, Elbert Road. So I turned around and came back, and uh, picked up a couple, uh, or picked up a guy along the road that was stranded as well. So, yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, having to help each other out out there. I'm hearing that a lot. People just having to pull people out or pick somebody up. Um, I guess that's the way it is out here. If you see somebody, help them out. Absolutely, <laughs> and it needs to be on, on a day like this, as uh, you know, everybody's neighbors. I've talked to quite a few people who, I don't know, were you, who said, I thought I could get into work for a couple of hours and make it home. But this thing moved in fast, didn't it? It moved in incredibly fast. My wife is at home, and she begged me not to go to work this morning, but I needed to get some invoicing done, so I ran in. And, and she said when it hit, it was just, I mean, immediately. It was just like it was visible, and it was like three minutes. It was just like she couldn't even see the car in the driveway. So did you come out across Woodman? I live about three miles um, west of Calhan. And so I came in from Calhan and then I went, uh, uh, my business is in town and I was I had to go in to do invoicing and then I tried heading back about 10.30 and I'm finally getting here to shelter at, what is this, 3.30 or whatever it is. I'm not even sure what time it is. Yeah, we came out at like 10 and we could just feel it getting worse. We made it just in time, but I've talked to multiple people who just need to get four miles down the road to Peyton or the, what is it, 15 to Calhan yeah. out there and they've been looking at it. Um, there's the wind, visibility, right? That's terrible, isn't awful, it? Awful, awful. Is the ice a factor too? You just, I know when we were coming out, we were having to look down at the road to follow the tracks. Um, were you doing some of that as well? Yes, very, very difficult. The snow plows had, um, had you know, went through earlier and tried um, plowing away, and the snow that came off the plow was very slushy, and now it's getting colder, and that stuff's frozen. It's like hitting boulders when you hit one of those, and it, yeah, it's really, really difficult driving. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just going to put it out there. Safeway said we're not looking for publicity and they're not a shelter. There is a shelter just down the road over at the Falcon Center. It's right across from the fire department, Peyton High School and that. Uh, they've been more ki than kind to do this. Were you relieved to see that there was something open here? Very, very. I was, uh, when I saw the doors open, it was, it was a huge relief because I didn't know where to go from here. So, yeah. And I'll give a shout out to the manager here. She said, oh, don't say anything. And 
when we go on and on, I guess I let my guard down, but she said, we well, just want to make sure everybody's safe. And that's kind of the attitude out here. The storm kicked in, they've been open, and they've allowed people to come in, get a sandwich. A few people are getting in and out, but um, yeah, we got our new best friends all out here for the next couple hours. It seems oh, like. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully it's only two hours. I'm like um, wondering if there's, you know, corner that I can crawl up and sleep tonight. No, yeah. hopefully. It could be worse. There's 100 people that are on Woodman stuck right now, so we're glad we're not them. There's uh, quite a few on Highway 24 as well. Um, and there was just, uh, I tried getting back into the Springs because my son has a house in the Springs and there was, there must have been 20 cars, you know, all in a pile and right past uh, Garrett Road. Okay. So lots and lots of roads. We appreciate it. We'll probably be around here a while and I'll find out more from you in a few minutes but i'm just going to step outside maybe just show you a little bit of what's still going on here if i've got time to do that you can see <clears throat> snow is still just white out conditions out here a little bit of a break right now <clears throat> i kind of use some of the things out in the parking lot as a judge and there is the cart return out there 30 minutes ago i couldn't see it now i can one person going out to brave the brave the storm here <clears throat> He lives right up the road. He said, don't do what he's doing. If you don't live as close as he does, he lives just within a block, going in a little Budweiser to get him through the afternoon, I guess. Anyway, that's what it's take. Settle down. Turn on your Netflix. If that's not your beverage, have some hot chocolate, I guess. It's just uh, a mess out here. People who can't get home, they're just stuck here waiting it out. We're here with them every uh, few minutes. The story walks through the door of somebody who's been stuck for a different reason, seeing damage. Just a lot going on for you. Watching out for Eastern El Paso County, Bill Folsom, News 5. Thank you. And maybe not Netflix, just stay here on News 5. We'll keep you up yes. to date on everything happening. Because we have a team of reporters, not only Bill Fol Folsom yes. uh, out there in Falcon, Zach up in Monument. We have Allison in Woodland Park. We got you covered. Things are lightening up and lessening in the Pueblo area. They still have power outage issues there. But uh, as far as the snowfall is concerned, it's north of the Pueblo, and El Paso County line. Power outages have been a huge issue. The lights in my house were flickering, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is only a matter of time. Let's go to Patrick Nelson. He's in studio talking about the outages for us. What's the status now? Elizabeth and Rob, today, not only intense outside for our reporters, but also for emergency management folks here in the Pikes Peak region. This is actually the very first large weather event for them since they consolidated Colorado Springs resources and the counties. Now, we showed this to you a little bit earlier, but this again, City of Colorado Springs website, Office of Emergency Management, lots of resources there. If you need it, hopefully you can access that with your mobile device. Now, one of the issues that they are trying to manage is those power outage, outages, as Elizabeth had mentioned. Now, we just got new information in. This is a map for Mountain View Electric Association. And just to give you an idea, this is Colorado Springs right here. And you can see all the outages, especially to the east of I-25. And I'm just reading the little map key here, and it says the areas that are purple, there are 500 plus customers impacted. And so just to kind of zoom in, you can see a lot of that is that northern uh, corridor that we've been focusing on uh, in Colorado Springs, north of the Air Force Academy. So you can see all the outages here all the way up to a uh, monument in the monument area. I just have a news release here in my hand. It says that right now they believe that there's more than 18,000 members without power for Mountain View Electric Association customers. And the problem is, is not only is there power outages, but of course the crews that are trying to work on those outages are having to deal with uh, the weather outside. So not only visibility concerns, but it's a standstill on many of the roads that these guys have to travel to be able to get out to check out those outages. Now, we know there are also outages in Colorado Springs and in Pueblo. Gonna pull up the Black Hills energy map now in Pueblo, and you can see it's not just in Pueblo, but again, areas east of there, all the way down toward uh, Rocky Ford, that there's been different outages that have been reported. So again, you can find this at home, Black Hills Energy Dot com and they have a outage map real quick let's check out Colorado Springs as you can see you know nobody's immune across the city it's really in pockets in different areas as Elizabeth had mentioned uh, I know my family lives kind of in the uh, northeast Colorado Springs area and I was hearing from them that their lights too were flickering on and off so it's, it's a really uh, delicate situation when it comes to power 
out there right now. One last thing before I send it back, uh, when I talked to emergency management crews and even uh, the mayor here in Colorado Springs, he wanted to re remind people that even when things start to improve with this storm, crews will be very, very busy because even though the snow may not be falling as rapidly with the wind, it's going to be blowing it everywhere. And so you can see the primary and secondary uh, routes here for the snow plows just in the Colorado Springs area alone. And they are anticipating that, especially on the primary routes, they're going to have to take multiple turns uh, through these areas to clear them out. And once they feel comfortable with that, they'll move on to those secondary routes. So even as this storm moves on, there's going to be a lot left behind for our emergency management crews and especially our street crews to try to keep it safe for us as we head back out there. But again, the main message, if you don't have to go out, don't do it because you're not only putting yourself in danger, but also other people who happen to be out there and especially our first responders who have it tough enough, but in these conditions, very dangerous for them to have to perform a rescue. So ideally, uh, stay at home, stay tuned with us, and we'll keep you posted on when it will be safe to uh, head outside. But right now, it is still uh, very treacherous on the travel. And just know that several pr plows and road crews are out there, including the utilities crews that are working on all of those power outages. So just to hit it again real quick, uh, Mountain View Electric saying uh, that over 18,000 customers are without power right now. Many of those uh, in the areas north and northeast of Colorado Springs, Pueblo also some outages and in the city of Colorado Springs. So uh, this is something to definitely keep an eye on and we'll keep you posted as those, as those outages are lifted. Back all right. to you. Patrick, great info. Thank you. All right, there's a live look. Let's all think about something warm and sunny. How about baseball? The uh, Colorado Rockies, of course, finishing up spring training down in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, but right there, Cue the dirge music. Snow, cold, wind, blow at Coors Field up in Denver. But uh, we do know from what our weather folks are telling us that eventually, okay. sometime, the snow is going to move out. The sun will return. Temperatures will warm up. We just got to be patient, sitting in our homes, not driving. Yes, or wherever you are. Yeah. Just, just don't leave. If you're at work, stay there too. <laughs> Baseball, you know, we're really going to earn the season Yes. when we get to it. There's another look, and essentially oh, those are the same vehicles no. that have been sitting in the same spot for the last three hours. Uh, sadly, I-25 is still shut down between Woodman Road mm -hmm. and basically Metro Denver, and no timetable as to when that might change. So, again, boy, that's tough, tough situation for those folks who got caught in the middle of all this when those decisions were made to close it. We took um, 83 for a bit. There were stranded cars there as well. The people trying to get... 83 is closed now, right. too, from 105 to Franktown. Not good. Let's no. go to Zach Thaxton. He's on the phone now. We just tried to get to his live shot, but, you know, the elements are not playing well with us tonight. Zach, tell us about Monument Jessica Van Meter. So there's 10 inches of snow out there. It's hard to tell just exactly how much snow there is because in some areas there's maybe a quarter inch, other areas there's a knee deep or even thigh deep just because of the drifting. I can't imagine I-25 will be opening anytime soon because the visibility up here is virtually none. Uh, the wind is just blowing so much snow around that it's creating literal whiteout conditions to the point where some, sometimes you can't even see the car in front of you. Uh, a, a, a fire truck and an ambulance just passed by here on Highway 105 by the Walgreens could barely see them, and they're probably only about 20 yards away. Unbelievably, I did see somebody trying to go out for a jog in this weather with the wind behind them, but uh, uh, turning around and going against the wind with the snow, I can't imagine to be comfortable at all. Uh, most things are closed up here. They're closed up here. The uh, Taco Bell is closed. The Walgreens is closed. Uh, the 7-Eleven seems to be open, and there are people uh, going in and out of there, but uh, the few people that are able to avoid the interstate and perhaps uh, try to make their way around through Palmer Lake or Spruce Mountain Road, which is not advised because those are in terrible condition as well. But the few people who are making it through monuments are going extremely slowly. They cannot really see the signals at the intersections because uh, of visibility and also the fact that some of those signals have been clogged up with snow inside the, the cylinder where the light is. And uh, the conditions really have not improved. Uh, it, it just is persistently very, very windy with blowing snow 
and very, very slight visibility, a, uh, a, uh, a snowcat type emergency vehicle on, on treads, uh, the, uh, like you would see on a bulldozer just went by here on Highway 105 with its lights going as well. So, uh, no movement up here. It's just the same and it seems utterly relentless. I can't believe someone was jogging, Zach. This is real life. I, it seemed like a recreational run to me, not somebody who was running because there was an emergency. They, they seemed to be enjoying themselves. I was going to say, with the snow blowing sideways, it's like getting shot in the face with buckshot because it's so intense out there with those pellets hitting you in the face. But, hey, everybody's got to do what they're going to do. We're not judging here. We're just saying not I'm a real smart a move bit. in this kind of uh, right. weather is not smart because of hypothermia and other kind of it's, issues that might develop. And if you're stranded out in the middle of somewhere, you fall mm -hmm. down, slip, slide, no one around yourself, to help you. Uh, then you the need rescuers to, have to go help correct. you. Don't do it. Stay inside, please. Please. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to go to Jessica Van Meter now. She is taking a closer look just how big this storm is. Also, some more on the road closures, the traffic that we're having, Jessica. Yeah, guys, obviously a lot of issues coming from this storm. And here's a look at some of the numbers with just how long and wide this system is. Obviously, that low just off to our east. That storm really extends from the Rockies all the way east into areas of Illinois at this point. So that's uh, just under 1,000 miles, close to 950 miles, really the width of that storm. And it extends all the way from the Canadian border down to the Gulf of Mexico. That's about 1,300 miles. And you kind of see some of this uh, shower thunderstorm activity kind of setting up in areas of Missouri down through Texas. That's actually going to bring a severe weather threat to areas right along the Mississippi uh, River Valley later on today. So kind of the opposite of what we're dealing with with our blizzard conditions. And obviously that low pressure with this system, something that we've been talking about that's moving off towards the east, developed around Pueblo, kind of trailed along the Arkansas River Valley and now making its way into areas of Kansas, and that's kind of what's giving us those very strong winds. We have had incredibly low pressure with this particular low pressure. Unofficially, that was recorded at 969 millibars. That is about the strength of a Category 2 hurricane. The previous record for pressure was about 975 0.5 millibars. That was over La Junta. So this is probably going to be our new record once they do officially declare that pressure. But the strength of a Category 2 hurricane with the winds and our strongest wind speed that we recorded today, 97 miles per hour at the Colorado Springs Airport. That is low end Category 2 hurricane force winds right there, equivalent to about an EF1 tornado. So just to kind of give you a perspective on this storm, and obviously that's causing plenty of issues as we've been talking about. Those wind gusts have improved a little bit around Colorado Springs, certainly down from 97 miles per hour at the airport. We're at 68 miles per hour right now. They did just announce that Colorado Springs Airport is going to be available as a warming center. Obviously, no flights taking off, especially with winds this strong. You don't want to be taking off or trying to land at an airport with a gust around 97 miles miles per hour. So Colorado Springs Airport closed for the rest of the day, but it will be open as a warming shelter if you're going to be in need of that. The wind and snow combined giving us those low visibility blizzard conditions out there. Here's a look at our visibility map. Zero is our visibility right now from Monument all the way up towards the Denver metro area out towards Lyman, basically zero at the Colorado Springs Airport. That's kind of where we've seen the biggest issues between Colorado Springs, Denver and out towards Lyman and areas of the plains. And those traffic issues just continue to pile up around the area. I-25, obviously our biggest closure right now. That is closed between Colorado Springs and Lone Tree. No getting northbound or southbound with that. Highway 83 is also closed north of El Paso County. That's not a good alternative to get towards the Denver metro area. You're getting better off just to stay home with all of these road closures. We've also got several closures out east. We've got a mainly northerly wind with all those strong gusts coming out. So a lot of those east to west roads are kind of the most affected with this. Even if the plows can get there to plow that snow off, that wind is just going to push that snow right back onto a lot of those roads. So Colorado 86 closed both directions heading out towards Lyman. Highway 24 is closed right now from roughly Falcon out towards Lyman. Highway 94 closed east of Colorado Springs all the way out past the county line. We've seen several issues in town as well. Also, another closure to tell you 
you about right here. I'll kind of zoom in and show you. That's in Teller County. Uh, Colorado 67 is going to be closed between Divide and Cripple Creek right now. That is the southbound side that's mainly closed. Looks like some of those northbound lanes might also be affected. So another area you want to avoid. Highway 24, we've had plenty of issues. I-25, aside from the closures, slowdowns there. A lot of those north, south, and east-west main roads around Colorado Springs are also seeing a lot of delays so far today. Academy has been a problem area for us. Powers has been a problem area. Woodman also a big area with a lot of slowdowns. We've had reports of about 100 motorists uh, trapped and stranded along Woodman there. Uh, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office has reported there are more than 500 drivers stranded around the El Paso County area. Uh, we've also had stranded drivers at I-25 and Baptist Road. They can't get on the interstate there. Taking shelter at the Pilot Travel Center right now. And uh, one last thing, if you did have any plans to uh, do any air travel, that's uh, not really going to happen for at least today, possibly into tomorrow as well. Delayed can might as well say canceled uh, for areas like Denver and Colorado Springs. Again, that wind gust at the Colorado Springs Airport was 97 miles per hour, totally justifying canceling all the flights for today. Denver also canceled for the rest of the day. I know my sister was supposed to fly in at 11 p.m. tonight. She's not flying in now until Friday at 2 a.m. Just to give you an idea of how backed up those flights are likely going to be because of this blizzard. President Trump's announcement with this afternoon with grounding some of those planes not going to make it any easier to get any of those flights in and out. If you have any plans to air travel over the next really three, four days even, be sure you call ahead and make sure your flight is still on schedule before you try to make that drive up there. Send it over to Mike right now with an update. Mike? A, a lot of concourse campers, without a doubt, with that situation, Jessica. But if you're looking for good news, not a lot of good news, but if you're looking for good news, I've got it. Right now, the snow not as intense and the wind right now not as intense. Yes, it's still a very dangerous blizzard across parts of the viewing area, but again, not quite as bad as what we were looking at earlier today. Right now, we've got snow from Colorado Springs all the way up to the Wyoming border, and now seeing some good snow south of Pueblo, all the way down through Walsenburg, Trinidad, down to the New Mexico border, but I wanted to point this out. I gave you the first alert on this last night. I thought when that north wind would kick in and get stronger, we're going to see a little break in the snow. And look at this, from downtown Colorado Springs to downtown Pueblo, not a snowflake falling right now. And here's the reason why. It's that downslope flow coming down the Palmer Divide. That's a drying component as that air pushes down the Palmer Divide. So again, dry between downtown Colorado Springs and downtown Pueblo. Still getting a little bit of light snow, mainly light snow across northern El Paso County. But with this intense wind, it's really blowing it around, creating those blizzard conditions. Up Ute Pass, still getting some healthy snows as well. Starting to run into higher terrain as you go southwest of Pueblo. So you start upsloping once again, and that's why you're starting to see the snow pick up southwest of Pueblo, across portions of eastern Fremont County, getting a little bit of rain snow mix. That's not very intense either. Wind not quite as strong there as what we're dealing with across the I-25 corridor. Rain snow mix across far southern Colorado as well. They're not going to see the brunt of the storm, but getting strong gusty wind in many areas. You can actually see that moisture uh, curling around that upper level low, pinwheeling around from north to south right now, gradually pushing off to the south and east. But you can see within the past half hour, starting to see more dry areas than we had earlier this afternoon. I want to show you hour by hour what's going to happen again with that northerly flow between downtown Colorado Springs, downtown Pueblo. I think you've seen the worst of the snow right now, but it is just going to continue to be a raging blizzard across northern El Paso County. That's where the snow is going to continue up into Teller County as well. As we work to 8 and 8.30 tonight, still seeing some healthy bands of snow across far northern El Paso County. Pikes Peak still going to get some snow. You can see dry conditions, though, from downtown Colorado Springs in Pueblo early tomorrow morning. Still going to see a few leftover snow showers across parts of the same primed area that we're seeing right now and even by sunrise and after tomorrow morning. Not out of the question. Not sure I'm buying that just yet, but not out of the question to still see a little bit of leftover snow. Here's how bad that wind has been today in Colorado Springs. That's the strongest wind we've ever had in the city. A gust at 97 miles per hour. Now normally we get those real strong westerly winds. Today a strong northerly wind. That's just showing you how intense this storm system is. As we mentioned earlier, uh, this thing is uh, rated as a category two hurricane. That's how strong this area of low pressure is. Violent winds, a lot of damage from Truckton, Black Forest, Otero County, that's around Sher 
Rah, they had a gust at 81 miles per hour. Blend is just east of Pueblo, a gust at 74 miles per hour. I'm getting some reports of some uh, pretty good wind damage across the city of Pueblo right now. We're trying to effort a few pictures to show you. We'll have that uh, hopefully during our 5 o'clock newscast, if not by 6. Here's what the wind is doing right now. Still violently gusty across the Pueblo area, gusting out of the north at 75 miles per hour. At the Springs Airport, we're gusting up to 68 miles per hour. Let me walk off camera and look at our sensor here in Rock Rim. What do we got right now? It's really tamed down. We've got north wind right now, 15 to 20 miles per hour in the Rock Rim area. So you can see the worst of it from the Colorado Springs Airport all the way down into the Pueblo Airport. And here's what that wind is still going to do. Not going to be out of the woods, but again, the worst of the wind is over for us right now. Going to see the winds gradually taper down as we work through the night tonight. This is early tomorrow morning, still windy, but nothing compared to the wind we've been dealing with throughout the day today so far. Here's a look at temperatures right now. Temperatures right now into the 20s and 30s. Really doesn't tell the story, though, with that wind. It feels incredibly cold out there. The current wind chill in the springs is 8 degrees. Woodland Park, it also feels like 8 degrees. And in Pueblo, right now, the current wind chill is 18 degrees. So as we've been telling you, this is the day you just want to stay in, stay safe, and stay warm. Elizabeth? Thank you. And there has been a uh, Commissioner Mark Waller from El Paso County has signed an emergency declaration to get assistance from state and local governments. They're saying 1,100 drivers are stranded now. That number is up from the 500 that we've been reporting. So at least 1,100 stranded drivers are trying to save these people. We're going to have more on this in a minute. But first, we want to go to Jess Cabretto. She is live along I-25 in Fillmore, letting us know what's happening in that area. Jessica. That's right. And just an hour ago, we were experiencing pure whiteout conditions. Right now, the wind is picking back up. You can hear it howling. I can hear it howling pretty clearly. Not a lot of drivers on the road. That's a good sign. That's exactly what city and county officials are asking people to do is stay off the road. Earlier today, we saw several cars stranded along Fillmore. They were even blocking a plow truck from getting by. Right now, the city of Colorado Springs has about 40 plow trucks on the road. These drivers are working 12-hour on and on shifts to get to all the primary roadways. Those are roadways like Fillmore Street that have multiple lanes that are busy, that have heavy traffic on a regular basis. But again, the major takeaway here, just stay off those roads because you can not only get in the way of a plow truck, but you could be putting yourself and other drivers in danger as well. We'll keep an eye out here on conditions, but for now, back to you in the studio, Elizabeth. Jessica, thank you. Just so glad to see not a lot of cars out on the roads because I was seeing a lot on North Academy earlier today when I was on my way in. So many cars, they were all swerving. Here comes Rob. They were swerving all over. My driver said it was a layer of ice mm -hmm. with about six inches of snow on it. No, that was spots. the thing that it rained for several hours right. and then it turned into that slush, then froze. A lot of people, the false sense of security to seeing kind of the fluffy snow on top, but right. it's that stuff underneath that <laughs> it's dangerous. I was just talking to so Bree Groves. Her husband was going to pick up the kids and uh, just started to slide and slide, and a tree actually fell down near their car. Thankfully, she's got two small oh, kids. So scary. Got away from that uh, safely, but you know, just that's the kind of thing you can't anticipate in right. these kind of circumstances. That's why we continue to urge, and we've seen photos already of trees that have snapped, fallen over, power outages all over the place. All over the yeah. place. Our Patrick Nelson, he's live on the weather deck now with more on this emergency declaration and how they're going to be trying to help these stranded motorists that are all over. Patrick. All right, we're having an audio issue with Patrick. Sounds like the mic may not be on. You know, I did that when we first started our coverage, so I it's understand very, that completely, that you, you rush out and you right. get your stuff on and you're hoping that uh, the microphone is on and, and gosh darn it, I forgot to turn the <laughs> mic on, the most important thing. <laughs> but folks are patient out there in TV yes. land, we understand And he was that. just in the studio showing those power right. outages. Now he's all bundled all up right. outside. The mic is good. Patrick, tell us more about this declaration now. You know, who would have thought the mic works a lot better when it is on? So I'm glad <laughs> you guys can hear me now. But uh, uh, all seriousness, I just got off the phone with uh, Jim Reed, who is the director of the Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management. He has a very tough job today. He's trying to manage this weather and keep everybody safe. One of the most startling things that he had mentioned to me is that throughout the day, more and more 
drivers are getting stranded out on the roads across Colorado Springs and El Paso County. They believe right now there are at least 1,100 drivers stranded across our area. Not a good thing, not only because of the obvious dangers of being stranded out there, but also it makes it where it's impossible for the street crews to get through and plow those roads. So the snow continues to pile up. They say right now the number one concern for emergency management in our area is life. They want to make sure that people survive this storm and that they are safe and they can get them out of those cars and up off of the roads. One of the things that was mentioned to me today that everyone should think about if they know anyone who is stranded or if they do become stranded in a storm like this is if your tailpipe of your car is covered, that can create a carbon monoxide issue, which could be deadly. We've talked about that in the past. So they say if you are stranded and you're going to have to try to tough it out in your vehicle, that you want to make sure that your tailpipe of your vehicle is not buried in snow or covered by snow. Crews that are going out uh, to find those stranded cars, the cars that have been inspected will have a yellow caution tape wrapped around it. This is something you'll probably see in the coming days for the cars that have been stranded. If there is a vehicle that does not have that caution tape wrapped around it, that means city crews have not gotten to it yet. So certainly you'll want to check on a person if they are inside that vehicle uh, and, and call first responders if you have to. But again, very dangerous conditions out here to travel. So if you can avoid doing so, please just stay home and don't travel because again, people are not getting to their destination. 1,100 people at least stranded throughout the Colorado Springs and El Paso County area right now out there on the roads. And one thing I've been told is throughout the day, that number has continued to multiply. So starting the day, they felt uh, very positive about the situation because a lot of people were called off of school. Uh, a lot of the city and county offices were closed. So there weren't a lot of people on the roads, but people who actually did have to go to work today and go to those businesses that were still open, they believe a lot of them as we head into the evening commute hours are going to be trying to get home. And so even if you're at your business right now watching us, you may want to make other plans because again, it's going to be a very treacherous drive out there. And emergency management is telling us people literally are stranded in their cars on the road right now. They're trying to get to them as quickly as possible, but this is a big task for those first responders, and the roads come after uh, the consideration of life. So once they can finally get those folks out of their cars, get them rescued, then they can move the vehicles, and finally the plows can come in and address these roads. So anticipate these roads are going to be an issue well into the nighttime hours and especially in the morning commute tomorrow. So you'll want to stay tuned to us here at KOAA News 5 and online at KOAA.com for all of the updates as this storm makes its way through. Back to all right, and good advice there. You should probably just start to make those other plans now mm -hmm. if you were planning on staying through work till yeah we're the putting some of our crew just at local hotel right down the street right. because they can't even drive home so and we have a whole list of emergency emergency shelters that the red cross has set up all over southern colorado for you guys you can find it on koa.com but there's one on east springs west springs there's one in larkspur one in castle rock there are locations everywhere the red cross is ready to help you in case you're not able to get home tonight yeah and we can't emphasize enough that if you're somewhere stay right there yes. if you're Obviously, people use mobile devices now to follow us as well. We're mm -hmm. streaming it, but if you're in your car, you're actually listening to our coverage, please don't leave that vehicle. No. As Patrick told you, that these emergency first responders are going to go car to car to make sure that they're checked. They will put that uh, caution tape around to make sure that it has been checked so they can move on, much like they do in the aftermath of tornadoes when they're checking ho homes to make sure people are uh, out safely or other kinds of disasters, flooding, etc. Yeah, but anyway, right. a process is in place to get to you. But again, it is a very serious situation still, and you really need to make sure that you have a backup plan. Yeah, be patient, stay exactly where you are, especially if you're stuck in your car right now. I did see someone get out and start walking. Mm -hmm. You can barely see them. Right. Please don't do it. Just stand. This is and this is another opportunity that we have said during our wildfire coverage, our flood coverage before. Listen, if you have not followed the emergency procedures that we continue to report on over the course of a year or so about the emergency kits, about the uh, getting your personal belongings together at a home in the case of a wildfire here or an evacuation. Right Sadly, we have come across another major natural disaster here, but it is 
serving as another reminder that these things that we tell you to do matter in a situation like this because obviously many, many people are stranded right now in their vehicles or in their homes and may be asking themselves, okay, hopefully I have enough to get me through the next 24 hours. Uh, hopefully that there will be no power outages to affect you as well, but that's also a possibility. But again, these lists that we put up are for your safety and we want to make sure that you are taking those necessary precautions. There's a look right there at uh, the I-25 at Green. <coughs> Excuse the Greenland me. exit there, you can see those semis have pulled over. We have seen some cars moving through there. Right, and I was going to say the last several times that we've looked at that traffic cam, mm -hmm. there have been no vehicles there. Those right. semi-truck drivers, those guys are maniacs. They'll drive through anything. I actually saw one at jackknifed off Woodman mm. and I-25 there was backing up traffic before but uh, you know they have to do the same thing as we do only they're in a much larger vehicle and they have to find a place to pull off but again as far as we know no updates from CDOT in terms of any kind of reopening any stretch of mm -hmm. I-25 and it basically at the end of the day they're not going to do this incrementally at least between say Monument and Denver and Colorado Springs and Monument, they're going to have to open it all at once, or and as they have, shut it down at the same time because they don't want any traffic on there. And the plows haven't even have a chance to touch it. We have seen a couple yeah. of times we went to those live shots trying to get plows on the road. That is so eerie. That site right there. Mm -hmm. That is just an eerie site. And it, it was really scary because when we were driving, and you come upon a box truck or another stranded car and you would have to navigate around it quickly because you're approaching them and you don't see them. All of a sudden there's a car right there and then you're trying to navigate around the car, then you're hitting a patch mm -hmm. of ice. It is treacherous out there. Do not go outside. Here's a live look right outside our studios. You can see that blowing snow right now. You know, I looked out at our window here where our uh, weather center is, and I could actually see the interstate for the first time in about three hours. So there's hope. And <laughs> our Andy Cohen is positioned right near I-25 at Fillmore. And Andy, when These we spoke with Jessica Barreto, there's Andy uh, getting ready for that live shot. Yeah. It actually looks uh, quite clear. Looks All like right. the snow has yeah, lessened a little. And uh, Andy Cohen getting his... Uh, stuff together there before uh, we on. take him live. Andy, can you hear us? You're good to go, my friend. I, I, I hear you. I hear you, Rob and Elizabeth. And uh, yes, we seem to have gotten ourselves in the eye of this storm for some reason, because a lot of the whiteout conditions that we were experiencing uh, just maybe an hour ago, they've really died down. We've got a lot better visibility. And you can see here along Fillmore, just looking towards Chestnut Street, uh, the road is passable. Before, we had a lot of cars, a lot of two-wheel drive vehicles that were getting stuck just right here off the interstate, at least a half dozen vehicles that were all stranded. They had to bring out some city plow trucks to try and get everybody to, uh, uh, you know, help push those cars out of the way. People were getting out of their cars and pushing them out of the way in order to just get them off of the road and then get those plow trucks up and down the hill here. They've made uh, several, at least a half dozen passes here that we've been watching off and on throughout the afternoon to make sure that this part of the city is clear. It's one of those primary routes. Those primary routes are really um, uh, any of the big major roads throughout the city, you think Fillmore, you think Woodman, Platt, you know, if it's uh, close to a hospital like Fillmore is here because you got the Veterans Hospital just up the hill and you're not far from Penrose as well. Now, in addition to that, uh, the what we had heard from Corey Farkas, uh, who is in charge uh, at the city of Colorado Springs about how they're planning to uh, approach clearing the roads throughout this storm. He said they're just going to be making pass after pass because after the snow falls, what you get is the wind blowing back in and it blows some of the snow over from the side of the road. It gets back onto the road surface. So they have to keep doing those primary routes today. They're hoping to get into some of the secondary routes. Those are along where the schools are by overnight hours tonight. Now, so, uh, some other things that we have learned today, I've heard from the folks at the Springs Rescue Mission, and they tell us it is standing room only. They've got a, 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 day, sh a, sh a day center, a day shelter, kind of a winter warming area where you could be during the daytime. Uh, it's supposed to have capacity of 225. They had 300 people in the room. They're expecting a full house at the Springs Rescue Mission tonight overnight. Colorado Springs Utilities also dealing with a lot of broken branches uh, from uh, tree branches that are falling on power lines. There are some sporadic reports of power outages really throughout the city of Colorado Springs at this time. And uh, if you do have one, 
that's fallen on a, a tree or a branch that's fallen on a line in your neighborhood, don't try to remove it yourself. That's extremely dangerous. Instead, you should call and report that to Colorado Springs Utilities. I'll give you the phone number. If you don't have a chance, you can get a pen, and then I'll give it to you again. But it's 448 4800. That's the phone number to call to report those power outages if you have one, 448 4800. Of course, they do a lot of stuff on the internet, so if you've got internet at home, that's another way that you can call in and make a report if you've got a power outage as well. Uh, in fact, the CEO of Colorado Springs Utilities, Aram Bunyaman, he told us today uh, that they have three to four times the number of linemen that are working today to really get out there than they would have on a normal day. It's about 300 plus linemen that are out there. They are looking for these outages. They are trying to keep people warm and trying to keep the lights on and the power on for them. So those are the guys that are the real heroes out here tonight in addition to those snowplow drivers who are working 12 hour shifts. And keep this in mind, they're gonna do 12 and then 12. And they're going to do that all the way through Friday morning, they're expecting to, at least, perhaps even Friday evening. So they have got some long days ahead of them, and we really respect what they are doing to keep our community safe. But if you don't have to be out right now, I mean, there's no reason to be. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Andy, thank you. It looked almost nice where he was. <laughs> right. But uh, don't be fooled. No. Uh, Jessica Van Meter just told us that the real eye of the storm is out over Kansas. That's just some of the uh, happenings from the way the storm continues to mm -hmm. shift, as Mike pointed out, that perhaps a little drying, at least temporarily, from Colorado Springs down to the southern point. Because we're just up north of him, still Correct. blowing snow, looks like white out outside where we are. Let's go to Allison Zimmerman in Woodland Park to see a taste of what it's like out there. Allison. Hey, Robin Elizabeth, uh, as we tried to mention earlier, you know, this snow has been coming down nonstop since we got into town around 1045 this morning. Just to give you an idea of how much snow has come down. This is a snow drift up on the sidewalk, but you can see as I'm walking through it. It's coming up well over my ankles, and I've been talking to some people. I I've, I've, have caught a few people walking through town here to maybe help some of their neighbors um, who need help getting out of their driveways because of all the snow that's come down. And people are telling me that they were in knee-deep snow in some parts of Woodland Park. So they've really been seeing quite a bit of snow all day long. Um, and also a big thing is we've actually been seeing quite a few cars traveling through here today. And you got to give it to the people in Teller County. Many people People are used to seeing snow, but this is a lot of snow. This is not something that they're typically used to all the time. But here we see even more cars coming down Highway 24. And I'm just to give you a better idea of where we are. We're right by Bergstrom Park in Woodland Park here. Uh, and those roads still snow packed. For the most part, people are being cautious. People are taking it slow, but it is nasty. Luckily for us up here, the wind has died down for the most part. Occasionally, we'll get those really aggressive gusts of wind where we just see all of the snow blowing off of the roofs along the businesses here. Things are easy going. Uh, Teller County Sheriff's Office earlier today was. All right, we started to get uh, Allison's connection started mm -hmm. to get lost there. Let's talk about the closures a little bit. Allison, thank you, by the way. Um, there are shelters set up all across southern Colorado for folks to go to. Um, warming shelters open right now for folks in El Paso County on Woodman Road, the Woodman Valley Chapel, and the Woodman Valley Heights campus. Peyton High School, Peyton Volunteer Fire Department, the Falcon Patriot Learning Center on Swing Line Road, St. Paul's in Cal Calhan, St. Peter's in Monument, New Covenant Church in Larkspur, and the Douglas County Shelter. Fairgrounds. All of these places are open for you to get to. Tell your family members, tell your friends if they're stranded that these are places, or if not not if they're stranded, but if they're somewhere in these areas, mm -hmm. they need a place to go. These are open for you. They, Red Cross, there to help keep you safe right out this storm in a safe place. Also, the Colorado Springs Airport, I was told. So folks who are in that transition mode, either right. going to or coming back from somewhere, stay safe at the airport. That's also serving as a warming shelter, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but another great uh, venue for folks to take advantage of. Also, as you might imagine, we have been receiving some school closures uh, from districts primarily out east of Colorado Springs. A uh, big Sandy School District closed. District 49, we told you about that a couple hours ago. They made a early call on that. District 49 closed. Elbert School District number 200, that's north and east of El Paso County, that is closed. Peyton 23JT, that is also closed tomorrow. 
Primrose School of Springs Ranch, three hours late. And again, all that information, as you see our website right there with our continuing coverage, has this information, Woodland Park, RE2, also closed for tomorrow as well. There's some other delays, some other private and charter schools, some medical uh, facilities, businesses, and for example, opening at 10 tomorrow, uh, Pikes Peak Vista Community Health Center, a two hour delay, but again, for all the very latest information, and our digital team continues to update this mm -hmm. information continuously, so go to KOAA.com and you can find all the closures, delays, etc., traffic conditions, you name it, we've got it right there. All right, and we have our crews all over. As you have seen, Allison Zimmerman in Woodland Park, we've seen Bill Folsom in Falcon, we just saw Andy at I-25 and Fillmore, yes. where Snow didn't look to be coming down too bad right where Andy was. Outside our studios, though, Mike Daniels, a different story. I mean, this this thing is crazy. And it's not going away completely for at least the next few several hours across parts of southeastern Colorado. Again, the wind not as bad as earlier. Again, the snow not as intense as earlier. Here's what that wind is doing right now at the Springs Airport, still gusting up to 59 miles per hour. Outside our studios in Rock Room, and they'll gust from 25 to occasionally 30 miles per hour, so nothing quite as bad as that. And in Pueblo right now, the wind gusting out of the north at 69 miles per hour. Strongest wind in the state right now is at La Hunta. You've got a northwesterly gust at 89 miles per hour. Are obviously going to see a lot of wind damage out across the lower Arkansas Valley with this storm system. Here's why we're in the shape we're in. Told you about it late last week, and this storm performed exactly as we thought it would, tracking out of New Mexico, right now situated along the Colorado-Kansas border. Circulation around this intense low, bringing in that strong wind. For the next several hours, gusts in many areas from 70 to 85 miles per hour, and the re wind really won't decrease a lot until late tonight across many areas. So with that storm, we've got the snow, we've got the wind, so obviously we've got the blizzard conditions across the area. Keep in mind that blizzard warning will be active for Colorado Springs until midnight tonight. It'll be Active for northern El Paso County until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Still have that winter storm warning for Teller County and far western El Paso County. The reason they don't have a blizzard warning, not a strong wind across that area is what we're dealing with here across the eastern plains. Also a high wind warning until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning for all of southeastern Colorado. It'll be common, as I said, to see gusts at least for the next several hours along I-25 from 70 to maybe 85 miles per hour. The stronger winds are now going to be shifting off to the east across the far eastern plains. That's what it looks like right now in Colorado. Colorado Springs. That's a live look from Mountain Shadows. Earlier this afternoon, we had a viewer write in, says she saw a little bit of sunshine out in Mountain Shadows. Not the case right now. That's a live look. That's uh, our camera that sits on the UCCS campus. That's Austin Bluffs in the foreground right there. Cloud ceiling has lifted a little bit compared to earlier today, but you can see the tree at the bottom of your screen still rocking back and forth quite a bit. Live look from Pueblo. Cloud ceiling has actually lifted a little in Pueblo as well. Dry skies had some real good rain across Pueblo earlier. Trinidad starting to see some snow right now. Just had a report from a viewer in Navajo Ranch. The snow has started to pick up across that area. And another live look from Woodland Park right now. Snow and uh, real slick conditions across the area. It is one of those days where I always advise you just stay in stay safe and stay warm. Here's that area of low pressure now creating a huge swath of moisture. We're not the only ones dealing with this storm system. You can see it's producing rain all as far north as the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. We measured that out. That encompasses almost 1,300 miles. That's how big this storm system is and the intensity with this low pressure equal to a category two hurricane. We don't see that very often here across our area. You can see that uh, upper level low shifting those bands of moisture across Colorado right now, but again, the worst is over between downtown Colorado Springs and downtown Pueblo. It's dry right now, and that's all because of that north wind kicking in, drying the air out as that air is forced down the Palmer Divide. That's a downslope drying north component. So again, don't see a snowflake between downtown Colorado Springs and downtown Pueblo. Little bit of snow. Again, the intensity not near as bad as earlier today across northern El Paso County back into Teller County. In fact, on 67 right now, we're not seeing a whole lot of snow. That road continues to be closed, though. Pueblo, you're dry right now. You run into higher terrain as you move just to the southwest of Pueblo. As you run into that higher terrain, you start upsloping once again, and that's why you're seeing that snow to the southwest of Pueblo. Snow has ended across Canyon City. South, we're getting a little 
little bit of light snow right now across portions of southern Fremont County. There's the snow starting to intensify just a little bit across far southern Colorado. And you can see the loop here for the past few hours. That uh, snow not near as intense, not covering as wide an area as it was earlier this afternoon. I want to take you hour by hour and show you what we expect with our computer model by 530 this afternoon. Again, it's over between downtown Colorado Springs, downtown Pueblo, but just north of the downtown area, those snows pick up. Prime target is going to be far northern El Paso County, close to the Palmer Divide. Still going to see snow across parts of Teller County. As we work into the 8 and 9 o'clock hours tonight, still seeing those good bands of snow there. Everything wraps up late, and then a little secondary piece of energy could actually trigger a little bit of light snow again tomorrow morning. That could stick around through at least 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning across northern El Paso County, adding insult to injury across those areas. Here's what the wind is going to do. 7 o'clock tonight, we'll still have gusts between 40 and 50 here. Going to see strong gusts across a good chunk of the News 5 viewing area. Even by 11 o'clock tonight, gusts in the 30s and 40s around here, so not as bad as what we had earlier, but still going to be windy across the area. Overnight tonight, gusts only into the 20s. That'll almost seem uh, tame compared to earlier today when we had those hurricane force winds across the area. Wanted to show that to you one more time. What a difference a day makes around here. If you've lived here long, you know what happens around here during the month of March. Radical temperature swings, radical uh, changes around here. We can go from sunshine to blizzards to severe thunderstorms in a heartbeat. Right now in Colorado Springs, 36 degrees colder than where we were yesterday at this moment. And in Pueblo, it's currently 35 degrees colder now than where we uh, were yesterday at this time. So again, March crazy month around here and it's certainly living up to that reputation guys absolutely mike thank you we just got word that 25 it's been closed from denver to woodman mm -hmm. it's now ex extended to denver to rock rim and road so the 25 doesn't look like it's gonna be opening anytime soon in fact it's right. getting stretched out and longer. i think they just want a lot of people who have been traveling on woodman to just not go there because mm -hmm. it's basically a parking lot from the interstate along woodman east and anyway, it's just a mess out there. So that kind of makes sense that they want to get as many people not to exit right. off onto Woodman because that's just a mess going east and west. But we have other uh, travel situations to tell you right there. There's Castle Pines Parkway, of course. That's uh, in Castle Rock, essentially. Again, the interstate is still shut down, <coughs> excuse me, as Elizabeth just mentioned. Some other uh, points of interest, Levita Pass, that's still closed. Also stretches of 94 east of Colorado Springs, 24 east of Colorado Springs, closed. I-70 east is basically closed from Pena Boulevard out to the Kansas border. Pena Boulevard going into the airport is closed. Denver International Airport is shut down. Runways have been closed. And as Mike showed you in his latest weather hit, that the vast majority of that snow now is north of Colorado Springs to the north and to the northeast as that storm system continues to push away from Colorado but all that moisture and wind spinning back into the northeastern part of our state that directly impacts DIA and no flights are going to be taking off and those kind of wind gusts not to mention the opportunity if they have it at all for those plow crews out at DIA to get those runways cleared talking about over a thousand flights have been canceled so far so again if you're planning on flying out please call ahead we're not sure what that delay is going to be here in the next 24 hours or so i'm not sure here's another look at the shelters um i think we have some breaking news unless you guys have talked about this earlier today that a colorado state patrolman no okay a colorado state patrol corporal was hit and killed today while responding to a slide off. This was on uh, in Weld County, which is north uh, east mm -hmm. of the Denver metro area. <sighs> Colorado State Patrol just tweeting this about 10 minutes ago. <sighs> Again, it's such someone a dangerous driving, situation, right? Someone driving lost control and hit the cor corporal Daniel Groves, 52 years old. He was trying to assist someone that had been involved in a slide off, and he was hit by someone else. Died well, at the hospital. Just break for that. That is this so is sad. why it is so important to do right. not go out there. And again, people found themselves oh. caught in the middle of this at the wrong time. But again, we stress this even when the weather conditions are not like this. The move over law, it is the law. And when you see these first responders along a particular highway, you need to get out of the way. We're still uh, litigating the uh, state trooper who was killed between Castle Rock Cody and Denver, Donahue. Cody Donahue, and that situation is still, again, it was a situation that 
uh, resulted in the state law changing to get people to be aware. But again, the conditions today, I'm not making any excuses, it's just an awful, terrible situation. People slipping and sliding in their vehicles, but again, it's just so hard for these first responders to be able to do their jobs when folks are not slowing down and being cognizant of where they are and where these first responders are. This is just Our hearts horrible. go out to that family and the state patrol community as yes, a whole. He had a partner of two years. Um, they say speeding, speeding and poor driving conditions might have been a factor. We're going to get the corporal's picture to show you guys so we can start remembering him. Um, right now we want to head out to uh, Zach Thaxon who's standing by in Monument. Zach? Yeah, we have seen no improvement here in the last three hours that we have been out here. The snow continues to blow and fall sideways, almost zero visibility at times. Uh, Highway 105 is right here. You really can't see it. The intersection that uh, facilitates the interchange with I-25 is there. Can barely see that. Certainly cannot see the lights. I'm going to walk over this way, and uh, my photographer Juice might intermittently uh, clean the lens because it is very uh, uh, easy to, to clear, uh, clog up. But this is the Walgreens over here. It is closed, but look at the entrance to the Walgreens. There is a drift that is uh, knee high right up against the door here. A sign that says, due to weather, we are closed. Sorry for the inconvenience. But even if they were open, folks would have to trudge through knee-high drifts just to come in the front door of Walgreens. And this is the case all throughout Monument here in the Dry Lakes area. Uh, it's really impossible to guess the depth of these drifts as you're driving through. And when you do drive through these, the texture of the snow is so grainy and like, like a very fine sand that it just takes your wheel and will steer it for you without you being able to do anything about it. And for that reason, the, some of the folks that have tried to uh, uh, drive around in this area have ended up in ditches or they are stuck in in, uh, in snow drifts. And uh, you can tell by this gust of wind that is hitting right now, it is even difficult to stand. So as long as this keeps up, the conditions up here are not going to improve. I-25 will not reopen, and the folks that are stranded are going to stay that way. It is really, really relentless, and it seems like it's even gotten worse a little bit. So uh, people are just parked here. This gentleman has been here for the entire time that I've been here, which is uh, three, year, uh, three hours now at least, and even before that. Uh, so things are not improving, and uh, once again, we've said it a thousand times if we've said it once, don't go out. Don't even try it. It doesn't matter how many storms you've been through in Colorado. Oh, I've been through 97. I've been through 2003. I've been through others. I know how to deal with these storms. Don't even try it. It, it really is not worth it uh, because people are, as we just heard right before this live shot, uh, literally losing their lives. In this, in this case, a Colorado State Patrol trooper. We'll send it back to you. I was watching out for you. Tri Lakes, Zach Daxton, News 5. All right, Zach, thank you. Our Jessica Van Meter, meteorologist, continuing to track the uh, the snow totals, the other conditions we've been experiencing for hours now. Let's check back in with her. As you know, you saw the drifts there in Monument, where Zach is. We had a report of about 10 inches of snow in Monument, but that's kind of just the average. They measured depths from 8 to 13 inches in various locations. So just to kind of give you an idea of how difficult it actually is to measure snow like this when it's blowing and drifting so much. But averaged out to about 10 inches there in Monument, about 11 inches in Woodland Park. That was from a little earlier this afternoon, so I wouldn't be too surprised if that has increased since the time of that measurement. We do still have that snow falling, especially Palmer Divide up through the Denver metro area, northern parts of Colorado Springs. And as Zach mentioned, the texture of that snow has changed quite a bit. This morning, when we had that changeover from rain to snow, it was a very wet, very heavy, dense snow. And as we've had that changeover continue to happen, those flakes are becoming a little more, a little more fine, a little more grainy, not quite as much moisture with those. Also, as our temperatures drop, that's contributing to that changeover as well. So a lot of that wet, dense stuff has moved off east. 
uh, but still some snow lingering in the smaller snow, the finer snow actually flies a little faster. So we are seeing plenty of issues still with blowing snow. Low visibility going to continue to be the case with this system. We'll kind of zoom out. Mike touched on this earlier and we mentioned it uh, the last hit we did just to show you the size of this storm, about 950 miles wide, extending from the Rockies all the way over towards Chicago right now and all the way from the Canadian border down to the Gulf of Mexico, over 1,300 miles there. Uh, that area of shower thunderstorm area you see uh, around the St. Louis area, that is heading towards areas of the Mississippi River Valley, actually going to cause some severe weather for the folks out there uh, later on today, kind of the opposite of the blizzard conditions that we're dealing with here. We've been talking about this intense low pressure system. That low has moved off into areas of Kansas right now, but we did unofficially get a reading of about 969 millibars with that low. It kind of formed over Pueblo and kind of traveled along the Arkansas River Valley off to the east staying at that very low pressure. That's about the equivalent of a Category 2 hurricane, which is very impressive and a new record for the state of Colorado, most likely, once that official measurement comes in. A uh, previous record was about 975 5. That was recorded over La Junta. And uh, with that, we did have some incredible wind gusts as well. A new record wind gusts at the Colorado Springs Airport was recorded 97 miles per hour earlier this afternoon. That is about a Category 2 hurricane strength, just like our pressure, or the equivalent of an EF1 tornado. So thankfully, our gusts have improved a little bit since that 97 mile per hour gusts were down to about 67 miles per hour for our gusts at the Colorado Springs Airport. That's still a very intense gust and those gusts over 70 miles per hour right now for Falcon Fountain out towards the Lyman area 85 what it's registering in Cripple Creek right now and obviously with that snow still falling from many locations the winds still howling out there visibility is still an issue we still have those blizzard like conditions going on everywhere under half a mile for our visibility right now the Colorado Springs Airport out towards Lyman we're just over half a mile at least it's what it's reading right now in Monument all the way up towards the Denver metro area we're seeing those areas dealing with low visibility and that's kind of what we would expect with a blizzard the strong winds and very low visibility here's a live look i-25 and garden of the gods you can sort of make out the roadways there you can still see a lot of that snow falling some diminished visibility right there we'll give you a quick update on some of those road closures just north of that intersection there, I-25 is closed all the way from now Rock Rim, and it was at Woodman before. That's been extended down to the Rock Rim and exit of I-25, closed all the way up through Lone Tree in both directions. Highway 83 is also closed north of El Paso County in both directions. Really just not a good way to get to the Denver metro area. As I mentioned, you're really better off staying where you are. Don't try to make it out on any of those roadways. I-25 still seeing some delays leading up to where that interstate is closed all the way from about Fillmore northbound. Got some big slowdowns there. Our east-west highways have been our biggest concern with this. Our winds have been coming from the north. That's a very strong crosswind for all of those east-west facing roads, especially as you get to the more open areas of the plains. So areas like I-76, I-70 out of Denver have been closed in both directions throughout the day. Uh, Colorado, uh, let's zoom in right here and we'll give you an idea of this. Colorado 86 heading out towards Lyman is closed coming out of the Denver metro area. Highway 24 has also been closed for most of the day from Callahan all the way out towards Lyman. Again, both directions there. Highway 94 is closed east of Colorado Springs all the way out past the county line. And just in town, we're still seeing plenty of those issues. Powers having some big backups at times today. Highway 24 on the east side of town where Bill Folsom has been. They've been seeing some incredible snow drifts out there as well. And plenty of delays out towards the airport and the southeastern side of town. Of course, Colorado Springs Airport is closed. No uh, flight's going to go off today, especially not a 97 mile per hour wind gusts. You don't want anything taking off or landing. When that is the case, the flights are canceled. Forget delayed. They're just canceled in Colorado Springs for today. The Colorado Springs Airport is still serving as a warming shelter. So if anyone on that side of town does need that, it is open for anyone to come in and get warm. Denver also canceled for the rest of today. A lot of flights canceled all the way through tonight and booking out over the next few days. We'll likely see all of these issues uh, linger over the next few days with all the flights canceled today. So if you do have any plans to travel, especially air travel over over the next few days, you really want to call ahead and make sure that those flights are actually going to be going uh, before you try to make that trip up there, especially tomorrow morning. I'm looking at you, Rob Quirk. From Southwest Airlines about 
when I'll be able to fly, but hopefully Just stay tuned. maybe tomorrow. And yeah. again, with the president issuing this grounding of all the uh, aircraft, the 737s, uh, there's going to be an issue yeah, there's for a, a lot, lot of, of flights A lot of tomorrow. big news today yes. to cover. And we continue to follow this breaking news that we just learned moments ago that a state trooper was killed while helping someone in a slide off. This is out of Weld County. Corporal Daniel Groves, I think we have his picture for you to show you. He was on I-76. I-76. There was a vehicle slide off. There he is. He was assisting someone with their slide off when troopers say John Carpenter was speeding and crashed into him. He was killed while on the side of the road assisting someone that was stuck. Uh, Corporal Groves began his career with Colorado State Patrol in July 2007. He's survived by his partner of two years. This crash is in, under investigation. Charges have not been filed, but they are saying it looks like high speed and poor driving conditions is what led to his death today that was completely unnecessary. And our prayers go out to the troopers and everyone affected by this is just terrible, terrible So many terrible of them putting their lives today. on the line in these yes. kinds of circumstances. By the way, we also got some additional information about just how deadly these kinds of circumstances have been for the Colorado State Patrol. In fact, uh, Corporal Grove's death is the fourth trooper to die in the line of duty in the last four years while outside their vehicle trying to assist someone. So obviously laws have changed in this state to try and obviously eliminate this scenario. But again, we've seen it again with uh, Corporal Groves today killed along I-76. That's a, a jut off of uh, I-70 going north on I-25. For those of you who know that, as uh, Jess Good mentioned, 76 is shut down along with 70 in that stretch. But again, we can't emphasize enough that people really need to be aware of their surroundings, particularly when those lights are flashing. And I did want to say that when I was driving in that I noticed a lot of folks had their emergency flashers on when the, the, uh, the snow was really blowing, which I thought was a great idea was because sometimes even when they had their headlights on, you can't see the rear red lights mm -hmm. on, but the flashing lights. So if you are driving in those kinds of conditions and you're trying to get somewhere, we don't encourage you driving, yeah. but if you have please put those emergency lights on while you're driving. It gives that person ahead of you and behind you a better idea of where your location is because as we saw driving in today, just approaching some of these intersections, you don't know what the traffic situation is yeah. until you actually get there. And right. I was almost hit from behind coming in and That's they terrible. managed to get out of the way. And so this stuff happens. I'm confident in my abilities to drive. Obviously, as Zach had mentioned in his live shot, done it many, many times but I'm not so confident in the abilities of others mm -hmm. since we have so many transplants now mm -hmm. from other parts of the country are not used to this kind of scenario. And this is as bad as it gets and when it comes to Colorado driving. Joe with 4 by 4s who took me to work today. Thank you, Joe. And they are out rescuing people. He said he could not believe the amount of is it two by fours? Is that what four by fours? No, but the one that's not a four by four. Oh, yeah, right. Two wheel four drive. By two, yeah. Mm -hmm. He saw so many cars out and about that did, did not have four-wheel drive that were totally stuck. Right. So you have to be aware of that, too, and your car's ability. Those are the vehicles, by the way. There were a couple of them <coughs> when uh, eastbound Woodman, when I was coming in, going up that incline to Union, two uh, rear-wheel drive cars were stuck at the top or just before the, the summit there, and that had backed up traffic all the way back to Academy, essentially. But, hey, you know, people find themselves in these situations, mm -hmm. but got to be smart when you're heading out in these kind of conditions about what the capabilities are of your vehicle. And I just want to say real quick, we put these warnings out. Don't leave your house. Don't leave your work. Stay where you are. When it's when there's a fire happening, we tell you to leave your house. We, these declarations are not to ruin your life or make things difficult for you. It's to save you and it's to save the emergency responders whose responsibility is to go out and help people. So. We always need to heed their warnings. This is so important. And deaths like this trooper's death, so avoidable and unnecessary. So please just always heed the warnings. Tell your friends, tell your family. Absolutely. As we had mentioned, I-25 shut down now south to Rock Rimmon. Let's check in with our Eric Ross, who's at I-25 and Interquest Parkway. Eric, what does it look like there? 
Rob, good afternoon. It has been one of those days where you just do not want to be out on the roadway. I am actually outside the Drury Inn on I-25 in Interquest, where some people have actually taken shelter inside the lobby to ride out this storm. Now, earlier today, I was actually riding along with a grassroots community group called 4 by Force, uh, which